Oh, dear. Okay, let's go. You ready, Len? Yeah. You promise? Yeah. Count us in. 15, 14, 13. Okay. Hello and welcome to episode 40 of Oh Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage. Coming to you, as always, from Communal Creative Studios in the heart of downtown Red Deer. Uh, for those of you still, again, inexplicably watching us on Rogers TV, welcome to episode three. I don't know how, like, I don't know if we just stick with episode 40 or change it for TV because they're they're different. But then I realized nobody gives a shit. So uh, welcome back nonetheless. And hey, if you're here for the first time, welcome. And I'm sure we'll have you for about five to six more minutes before you change the channel. Uh, I'm Ted Emmett. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And against all odds, we actually have a full house again tonight. First time, I think, since February that we've had all seven of us here. So this should be fun and a a gigantic dumpster fire. So let's get into it. Uh, Been a hot minute since this guy's been able to make a recording, uh, which has sometimes been nice. Sometimes we've missed him. But uh, making his Rogers TV debut in his $7 shirt. Uh, Dustin Moore, welcome back and uh, welcome to, to TV. Yeah. Ah, thanks, ladies, gentlemen. I got a $7 shirt on and nine inch shorts, so I'm doing pretty good. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. No, you, got about, uh, you got about six inches of leeway on those shorts. It's fine. But I'm not going to lie. I am fucking excited. Ted, get the bleeps ready. Yeah, that's your one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got, got my one out of the way early. It's good to be back with you guys and, and looking forward to having some fun tonight with some old beer beers from uh, our friends at Red Heart. All right. I expected you to, to say something really boring and, and bore us about your life, but luckily, we have the next guy to do that who uh, I shouldn't I should be nicer to him because his attendance has been been great so far. But uh, Kevin Walsh, welcome back. Thank you, Ted. Summer's been good. And I'm just excited that Dustin's back. So, oh, yeah, thanks, oh, friend. get a room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We will. I Fuck will. The rest of us. Yeah. Guessing. Yeah. Boy, that's a lot of bleeps already. <laughs> Good thing we don't pay by the bleep. Uh, Ryan Lund is here. Doesn't matter how I try to lead him into the conversation. Yeah, I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here, Ted. Um, We're currently in the middle of a tornado watch right now. So if this is our last video, Darren, delete my internet history. And mom, you can have my big screen TV. I hope I survive this tornado. I want that TV. <laughs> well, I think I think we learn. I'm by like common law by a lot of years now. So yeah, as long yeah. as as long as I can get out of this, I'm Kelly. You can have my new big screen TV <laughs> if that's what it comes to. Uh, while her attendance has been a pretty good, I guess coworker Aaron back after a one episode absence. So a, a welcome back. In Dustin's defense, I'm currently wearing a pajama top. So. <laughs> I, it can get worse. Looks good, Aaron. Thank you. That's good. You waste no time when you go home, like straight to bed. That's <laughs> yeah, just efficiency. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. We're going to run out of tape before these intros are done. But uh, having a full house tonight means we have to utilize the couch for the first time in months. So we finally get to use the, the new setup that Riley uh, from Communal Creative Studios has set up for us uh, on the couch, almost unfairly because he's done such a great job filling in up here at the big boy table. But uh, I guess a uh, seniority rules, but uh, Kevin's Strybosch, the athlete, at least you can see us now. That's true. It's nothing nice to look at, but no. um, you put in time and effort to get to the table and then it all just gets snatched away from you from a guy who shows up like 30% of the time. So it's a life lesson. You'll have it back till Christmas. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do better, Kev. And last, but uh, well, last is uh, Andrew Russell also back after I think a three episode absence. Uh, so at least a joyous reunion on the couch for you and the athlete at the very least. Well, the good looking guys always end up on the couch. So <laughs> <laughs> you look good today, Kev. Well, our Rogers TV audience will be the be the judge of that. Yeah. Well, hey, welcome to public access TV. <laughs> and first bus bench is now this a straight to the fucking top. Uh, right. Yeah. If you could blur my face, that would probably be better for viewing. But now nah, we'll blur it. Glad to be back. It's uh, it's been a long absence of crazy spring market and coaching kids lacrosse and, you know, fatherly duties, other things that uh, sorry, guys, it's just more important than you guys. Hopefully we can blur voices, too, because that was pretty boring. But uh, hey, welcome back. <laughs> We I have anyone who's watching for the first time, I promise we're friends, kind of. Some friends we charge to be here, some we don't. That's how it works. Uh, <laughs> I already mentioned him. By the way, Andrew, your, your invoice is overdue. I already mentioned him, but a huge thank you, as always, to Riley from Communal Creative Studios for having us here tonight and babysitting us. And uh, hey, big thank you in advance, Riley, to not make for not making any noise tonight, or at least keep it to a minimum. And that mullet's looking tight. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. Great comment for a podcast and off-camera person. Look at that great mullet, everyone who can't see it. Describe it. (laughs) Short, tight, party in the front, back. Business up front, party in the back. He's not a business guy, though. He's full party. (laughs) 
Why, why do we invite you back? All right. And now this next line, I'm going to say nobody's going to believe. But hey, we have a great show planned for you. I know I say that every time, but for once, we actually mean it. Uh, we have two very cool interviews uh, that the athlete co-worker Aaron and I got to do uh, when we were at the Hockey Alberta or Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame Awards Gala uh, here in uh, Red Deer in uh, late July. Uh, we have Red Deer Rebels legend Colby Armstrong and Calgary Flames legend Hockey Hall of Famer Jerome Aginla really slumming it hard, agreeing to do a couple of uh, impromptu interviews with us at the gala so uh doesn't seem like real life that those guys are, are going to be on our podcast but that's what we do uh every day is just defy the odds somebody's gotta do it ted and can we give a shout out to our one fan in studio let's zoom in on her uh, let's get the camera zoom yeah. in on our one fan uh, alex thanks for being here hey, thanks for gonna... cheering us on you know what? yeah and you know what? Actually, that was that was a lot. We probably already lost most of our audience, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about our, our studio audience member as we head into the Glad game. <laughs> I'm not sick. I was sick a month ago and this cough has lingered. It's, I'm super gross right now. Well, I'm sick of your attitude. Let's yeah. go. The Glad Game is brought to you by Rock On Records. Saks Thrift Ave has a new look, new location, and a new name. Visit Rock On Records at their new location for Central Alberta's largest selection of vinyl and band merchandise. Find them at 4828 53rd Street. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram for all the latest deals. All right, and a quick shout out for Vincent and the Rock On Records as well. I forgot like the last two times to mention this, so we may be issuing a refund. But uh, if you have old records too, anything you're looking to trade in, they are always looking to buy records. So uh, go in and uh, yeah, check it out. It's I've gone in there a couple times now. Uh, pretty sweet place. And uh, as you keep hearing like records, uh, keep on trending again and coming back. And a fun fact, they did a poll. 50% of people who own records don't own a record player. That's currently us, actually, yeah. Griff got his dad's old CD and record collection and we are not currently in possession of a record player. Sounds but like you're you got to go in at a rock on you're records. Not, and you're not going to give them, like you're not willing to just be like, I don't need these records. Like you're going to no, get No, no, we are player. going to be, yeah. I have talked to Vincent at length about what we need. We just feel like our house is too small. We need a bigger house. Griff needs a big set. Anyways, so I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's not like anyone on this podcast to talk about something and then not do it. So that's, yeah. Yeah, and Christmas is coming up, so keep yes. that in mind. By the time I get this episode out, probably. <laughs> All right, moving into the Glad game because we have a, a very personal one that we get to talk about today. Again, we mentioned our studio audience member, Alex, and uh, the athlete, Kevin Strybosch. Uh, we have a very exciting announcement. Uh, they just got engaged a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, hey, your life is over, but we're happy for you. <laughs> yeah. Not to the life is over part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your life is your lives are just beginning. Yeah. Don't listen to Ted about anything. Yeah, to do don't with take marriage. marriage advice from me. Hey, number one cause of divorce is getting married. I'm just saying. This isn't a glad game for me until I get this question answered. Can I come to the stag? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Not a glad game today. Yes. <laughs> what an answer. Yes, thank you, Ted. You've given me lots of marriage advice over the years. <laughs> um, I haven't listened to any of it yet, clearly. Well, there's some what not to do in there. Uh, I, I mean, I guess so. Yeah. You're right. But yes, it was very exciting. Month of June. Had it planned for a little while, but didn't really know how I was going to execute it. So while we were away on vacation, I decided to go do it while we were out in Kelowna and figured a nice big lake and sunset was a good setting. So um, she said yes. So oh, I'm assuming. Yeah. I, did it right. <laughs> I did it right. And speaking for Alex, if I may, the ring, beautiful. Well done. Excellent choice. She told me exactly specifically what she wanted. And if it wasn't that, she probably wouldn't have said yes. Yeah. Nice. But Perfect. you know what, though? That's the play, honestly. Like, if you already know you're going to get married and you want to get married, why not, like, take the guesswork out of it? Probably took a lot of stress off of you. Yeah, it was very yeah. easy. I did that as well. We had looked at rings together. Yeah. yeah. I told Griff exactly what I wanted. He went the exact opposite direction. And then I was so stunned that he had actually asked me to marry him that I said no a bunch and asked him if he could return the ring. Whoa. So, wow. And you're not wearing it right wow. now. No. Drama. So, uh, is it Griff is, single? He is not. He's <laughs> happily married. The ring is beautiful. And I do wear it when I'm wearing silver. He did not good. Not your pajama shirt. <laughs> 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 yeah. Doesn't match. Doesn't match. It doesn't go. Do, do we want to talk about too how like back when the, uh, the athlete Aaron and I worked together and you basically showed Kevin pictures of Alex on Instagram. And it's like, Kevin, this is your future wife. And then I don't know why uh, you're 
too late or whatever, a hot tub night was ruined for Dustin and I and a beautiful relationship started. I'm not going to take any credit, but I did try to sell that in early and clearly my instincts were correct. It paid off. Yeah. She went from Instagram girlfriend to landlord to <laughs> now ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and I was freezing cold that one September night when I didn't get my hot tub. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you owe us God, one, buddy. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, now I, I'm coming to that stag whether you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, that'll be like the first oh dear wedding. No one's no one's gotten married out of the the podcast since we started it. So yeah, it's very exciting. Again, Kevin, Alex, uh, honestly, congratulations! You know, we're all rooting for that to happen. So uh, yeah, looking forward to the, hoping I'm invited too. And if you want to sponsor an oh dear wedding, Whoa. oh, I was going to ask if you're going to invoice me <laughs> <laughs> for having an oh dear wedding. We'll talk. We'll talk <laughs> offline. Yeah, yeah. Just hopefully you pay quicker than Andrew. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Checks in the mail, bud. <laughs> All right. Very excited now to get to our feature interviews for this episode. Uh, always a firm believer that life always works out uh, the way it should. And uh, yeah, I've been really mailing it in this summer when it comes, well, my whole life. But this podcast, especially at the time of uh, recording, we're about uh, five days removed from the 2024 Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame Gala. That was at uh, Red Deer Polytechnic. It was excellent. At the time we were there, so five days before recording this, didn't have an interview lined up, figured, oh, there's seven of us. We'll just talk about our lives or whatever, which would have been a, a whole bunch of horse shit. So I'm glad we don't have to do that. So uh, again, uh, life finds a way. And uh, since the athlete coworker Aaron and I were in attendance at the uh, at the gala, I decided let's shoot our shot, see if we can get any of these inductees uh, to agree to do a last minute interview. And we managed to land, as I mentioned, a Red Deer Rebels legend, Colby Armstrong, played uh, almost a decade in the NHL, now a very popular broadcaster and podcaster. He agreed to do an interview and uh, against all odds, Calgary Flames legend, Hockey Hall of Famer, Jerome Aginla did an interview as well. Both guys were absolutely fantastic. So uh, without further ado, here's those interviews. All right. Well, Ted and the athlete here, uh, as well as co-worker Aaron at the 2024 Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame Awards Gala. A really cool, unexpected interview. We're here with former NHLer, former Red Deer Rebel, 2001 Memorial Cup champion, Colby Armstrong. Colby, thanks so much for uh, pulling away from the celebration and uh, doing this. Yeah, you guys owe me. Like, not a big <laughs> deal, but it's good to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I'm glad I'm back at Red Deer. I came back here when it was a 2016 Memorial Cup. I was working for Sportsnet. And we had a lot of our 2001 team that Brent had come in for that. Um, and I was working, so I'm a loser. I missed out on all the fun. I don't want to lose my voice when I'm on the air and staying out till three in the morning, hanging out with the boys will tend to do that. So this this means a lot to be back here just because it's Red Deer one, but the, the Hall of Fame and then just to see everybody. And obviously a huge honor for you to be on Red Deer's third most popular podcast. Yeah, yeah. You've been on a very yeah. popular podcast many times, so no, yeah. you're not going to be nervous but in all seriousness congratulations going into the Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame as a member of that 2000-2001 uh, Red Deer Rebels team uh, you already kind of mentioned what it was like to be back but uh, how does it feel to be you know uh, one of the biggest figures in uh, Red Deer sports and just Red Deer honestly because being that Memorial Cup team right still yeah. still to this day it means so much to so many people yeah and it just took for so long for us to get the Hall of Fame I'm always asking myself like what took so long we were awesome I mean uh, here we are like 23 years later finally right but no it's it's special I, I feel like the city's grown so much like there's so much more like everywhere neighborhoods I drive uh, drove around the other day when I first came in and I'm like what the hell is going on here um, so it wasn't like as big of a city I feel is this like smaller community but um, being back here now is just yeah it's 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 so cool to see the same faces and people that were there people that worked at the damn rink that are here that I remember <laughs> I had a mouth on me and I was swearing the penalty box all the time when I was in there yelling at people and uh, the penalty box guy was at our little event last night, so he heard me say some pretty bad things. But now he can just turn around, spit and check, let's hear it all over you. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, I think that's the best part, uh, just seeing seeing people that you remember that you shared so many good times with. Um, so you mentioned back in 2016, you were here, but you were working. Mm -hmm. um, after your playing career, you went almost straight into media and you've been very successful with it. Is that something that you pictured yourself doing while you were playing, or how did you kind of fall into that yeah good question i don't know i always enjoyed like just stuff like you got like this um stuff that, that no one watches <laughs> yeah uh, that's the challenge you get people watching <laughs> but uh like doing interviews and uh, you know we had the local t like starting in a community like this with like local news 
as is junior hockey. Um, you get to know the reporters pretty well, and it was something new. Like I thought it was like I thought it was like in the NHL playing here. You know, it was, like, it, was it was incredible. So to be able to like I guess I was just kind of comfortable with it right away a little bit. And my mom had always encouraged me when I was done playing, like maybe you should do this, you'd be good at this. And um, I was just mostly an idiot, but <laughs> that talked too much. Um, but it served me pretty well. And I love hockey. I watch like too many games. I'm a loser. Like why am I watching like San Jose versus Anaheim at two o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why, but I watch it because I'm scared that I won't know what's going on. But yeah, it's been awesome. I got to do radio, like studio TV, in, uh, interview people uh, on features and travel all over the place, be in the dress rooms, uh, call Penguins games for the last number of years. Uh, and then most recently, last couple of years too, doing podcasts with, uh, like you guys, with some buddies I started playing with in the American League that who knew that it would be what it is today. Um, pretty cool to join that. So just like tons of different stuff. And like, I think finding myself and being comfortable on air because it's kind of not real life. Um, but it is, but I think you do enough stuff and you find out like how you operate um, on camera and on air. I think uh, it's taken me some time, but it's it's been a lot of fun to be able to do that. All right, well, well we won't keep you too long because as you know, well, you know better than anyone, playing junior hockey, really tough to get to. Winning the Memorial Cup, arguably one of the, the hardest. The hardest. I know they say the Stanley it's the Cup, hardest. but the Memorial <laughs> Cup is, is crazy what you have to go through. Playing in the NHL, really hard. Uh, as podcasters, we've discovered, though, there's something even harder. It's a little game, uh, well, for, I, I guess, basically copyright reasons. We call it Gad Mabs. Gad Mabs. Gad Mabs. Uh, so we're going to challenge you here. Like you said, you're a Memorial Cup champion, but can you be a Gad Mab champion? Is it like uh, school? <laughs> a little bit. I, went, I, played, involved. I played in the Western League. <laughs> the Western League scholarship package. Here we go. Uh, so we're going to bring in co-worker Aaron. You're going to have a minute to read off right. some words in random order. And, and say, um, basically try and figure out what the actual sentence is. They're usually pretty common phrases. Uh, and I'll tell you what, the, the athlete really struggled with this one. Yeah. So yeah. if you get more than zero, you're, you won't officially be the worst at getting. Okay. Okay, what's the record? What do I have to do? I think the record is like three. Three in three a minute. Three in a minute. So three in a minute? How many are we letting him pass? Two passes. Okay. Two, okay. For a Memorial Cup champion, you can have two passes. Okay. All right. Don weighs my time. Don weighs my time. Say it a little quicker. Don weighs my time. Almost got it. Don weighs Ways. my time. Don We're doing it right now. Yeah. Don weighs my time. My time? Yeah. Yeah. Don. See the first part quick. Don weighs. <laughs> Don weighs my time. You almost got it. Don weighs my time. Don't waste my time. Yeah. Fuck. Yes. Can I swear? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Fuck it right. Let's go. <laughs> High dance eek. High dance eek. Yep. High dance eek. High. It's a game with children. High hide and seek. It's two. Two to hawk. <laughs> we need two to hawk. Two up. <laughs> <laughs> we need two to hawk. We right, need two to hawk. We yep. need two to hawk. Give you a couple extra seconds because you're so close. We need two to hawk. What are we doing right now? We, we need to talk. <laughs> talk. Jesus. It's right in front of my face. <laughs> my nose keeps getting in the way. God damn it. Well, you know what? You did I, how long did that take? Did you uh, cut me off? Ten. I saw you going like this. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. That's pretty good. Yeah, but you got don't overtime. Waste my time, which was the Kevin could not get don't waste One my minute. time. So you did pretty well. Look, a guy who can do it all, right? It's a, a <laughs> yeah. little, little humbling. Yeah. As a bro Go tell my wife that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one. Colby, we're going to let you get back to the celebration. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with a bunch of nobodies. <laughs> Following us up to a room, uh, very trusting me. And it's an honor to have you. Well, you guys have air conditioning up here. So thank you. Time. Amazing. Good luck with everything, you guys, your whole crew. Uh, fun to be back here. I'll have to send it to me. I'll have to watch it. All right. Tune in. Subscribe. You'll, all right. You'll follow. double our listeners. Let's right. go. Yep. 
All right, well, this is a pretty incredible uh, two Calgary guys, Ted and uh, Kevin, the athlete here, with two-time Olympic gold medalist, two-time Memorial Cup champion, Alberta Hockey Hall of Famer now, and Hockey Hall of Famer, Jerome Ginla. Jerome, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. And I guess, yeah, congratulations first off on uh, making your appearance on the Oh Dear podcast. I know a big, oh, no, <laughs> congratulations <laughs> on your induction into the, the 2024 Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame. Already a hockey hall of famer but how much does it mean to you to be able to, to again with your alberta roots being from the edmonton area playing in calgary uh, you get to go right in the middle of red deer and uh, celebrate this with your friends and family yeah it, it was a really nice honor um it's also going through it it brings back a ton of memories and it makes uh it, you know you look back i look back on uh, minor hockey and uh, relive it and also how fortunate i was i i, I had a ton of fun in minor hockey i played with uh, I had great coaches who helped me love the, you know, love the game. Teammates, we had so much fun. We won some provincial championships together. Uh, so it's really cool. It was a really nice night to uh, also be able to share it with uh, my uh, family, like you say. My mom was here. My dad was here. My wife, uh, uh, some buddies and stuff. So it, it was a really nice honor and uh, proud to go in with the, the inductees that I got to go in with, too. So this is just part of a pretty busy summer for you, obviously. What was it like going to down to Vegas, not only as a hockey dad, but now working for an NHL team, getting to the draft and uh, just seeing what that experience was like. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, it was nerve wracking, uh, not knowing uh, uh, the parent side. You know, once you get down and uh, once we sit in the uh, stands, and then you're like, I don't know what's going to happen, right? So it brings back a lot of memories. I remember my draft year; it was like the most nerve wracking thing ever, and so I'm sitting there putting myself in T position, but. Uh, thankfully, um, you know, it, was, it went really well. He's thrilled about Utah, and, and we're very happy for him. And uh, it was exciting for us. And then on the other side of it, um, the first day, Connie, uh, you know, he said, you know, be a dad and, and take the time uh, with Tish. And then the next day, I was fortunate to get to be on the draft floor with them and go through some of the players and, and watch and, and be a part of it. So it was very fun, very exciting. I think uh, uh, we got some really good players in Calgary, some good up-and-comers, uh, young guys and talented and skilled and uh, driven and uh, look forward to seeing them uh, progress. And so back in 2004, Kevin was pretty young. I was in grade <laughs> 10 and I went down to the Red Mile a couple of times and I saw some stuff I wouldn't normally have seen. So first of all, thank you and all the 2004 Calgary Flames for that. But just watching uh, what the run that the Edmonton Oilers just went on too, did that obviously bring up a, a lot of memories from that incredible run uh, way back in 2004? It did, it did. But I thought there was a little more style to the Red Mile the way it went, yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the, than in Edmonton, but I'm a little biased. But yeah, it did, and uh, um, it, it was special. I know it, 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 at the end of it, it doesn't feel good not winning, but part of sports and being able to share that with the fans and stuff, it was, like I say, the Red Mile, it was so many people, like, you shouldn't have been down there. Way too yeah. young, and, you know. It, uh, <laughs> I had a fake idea. Was no, like, no, yeah. no. As far as the cops know, there's a statute on that, right? <laughs> but you're not a cop. No, no, okay, no, yeah. no. We're good. We're good. And uh, yeah, so the Red Mile, the Sea of Red, all the, and it was awesome being able to beat out the Canucks, you know, in, yeah. in, in seven games. And I talked about it today a little bit, but Detroit, they were an unbelievable team with, I couldn't tell you how many Hall of Famers, you know, it, it was, you know, Hall and, and Verbeek and Robitaille and Lidstrom and Iserman and Shanahan. And I know I'm missing some, you know, like off the top of my head, uh, Osgood, uh, Vern, uh, 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 Joseph was a goalie then. So, um, but just amazing, like, team. And we, we somehow beat them because Kipper stood on his head. Yeah. You know, literally stood on his head. And then we got San Jose and Marlowe and Thornton. So it was really, really cool. Obviously, we would have liked a different outcome. But it was an amazing journey. And I do th feel thankful that we got to be a part of it. And, um, yeah, it makes you hungry, though. Yeah, it brings up some. But <laughs> I think they're slightly, you know, it, uh, I, I feel a lot worse the first time yeah. than well, the Oilers. <laughs> We're going to give you a chance at one more big win. Uh, we've started doing a thing for copyright reasons. We call them Gad Mabs, but they are Mad Gabs. Uh, Armstrong got three right in just over a minute. So I know you've already won one of the hardest trophies ever to win, the Memorial Cup twice, the gold, two gold medals. Uh, I don't know if that might pale in comparison to Gad Mabs. So co-worker Erin is going to come in. She's going to show you a couple uh, just regular words put together very strangely. Read them out loud at a different pace, whatever you need to do to sound it out. 
and let us know what this, the sentence is. So are, are you ready? Uh, okay. I don't know if I'm ready because I don't know if you've done a really, if I do well, then I'm ready. If not, yeah. you, did, you didn't do a good job of I have, explaining. I have final cut. On this. <laughs> okay. This first one's kind of a gimme. <laughs> no. Uh, hole in pig hands. Uh, hole, wool, no. You've been there a few times. Oh, really? Yeah. Hole in pig hands. Uh, first two words together. Hole in Olympics? Yeah. Olympic Games. Oh, okay. Nailed it. Don weighs my, um, Don weighs my dime. We're doing this right now to you. Uh, Don weighs my dime. Uh, Close. Just say it fast. Don weighs my dime. <laughs> no idea. All right. Well, what one is that? Don't waste my time. Oh, don't waste my time. Okay. Hi, Dan Seek. Uh, oh. As a dad, you would have paid, played this a lot. Uh, hi, hi, Dancik, uh, Dance Electric, uh, <laughs> uh, simpler, simpler okay. times. Hi, Dancik, um, what you're saying is, yeah. that's sad. This is the end of the day. I'm yeah. tired. I, I, it's going to be it's after. I'm going to be still like one more than Kevin. Hi, Dancik. Um, well, you said it. It's a game. You can go around the corner. You got to come look for me. Oh, hide and seek. Uh -huh. Oh, that's sad. No, what's another one? Is there one more? One Keep more. All right. We got one more. We just don't want to waste your time. Huh? We need to talk? Yes. You think that's, uh, that's the one we said just it. did it? You just yeah. said it. Talk to or whatever that one was? <laughs> really? Say it all together quick again. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. Uh, oh, I, I was thinking that Hawk 2. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought Much that is more very. PG. Yeah, Much yeah. More PG. <laughs> no, uh, say, say like the last letter. Oh, yes. Letter if your wife said this yeah. to you, you in a text, yeah. you'd be like, oh, oh no. yeah, it's very easy. <laughs> yeah. If, early in the day, we need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I get it. Nailed now. it. <laughs> it, it has been, <laughs> Thank you for the help. A long day. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Jerome, can I call you Jerome? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for doing this. We appreciate it so much. Congratulations again on your Hall of Fame induction, the Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame. And uh, we're going to let you get back to your night. But uh, yeah, thank you again. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. All right, a huge thank you again to Colby Armstrong and Jerome again for graciously taking the time to be on our podcast. That still sounds weird to say, especially after the ceremony too. They could have taken that extra 20 minutes to just celebrate with their friends and family, but no, they were in a back room with us doing a really weird interview and playing Mad Gabs and talking about Hawk Tua. <laughs> it's pretty funny that that came up with, with both of them. How do we get viral like that? My God, <laughs> we do something funny and we get like six likes. Anyways, uh, both uh, very gracious and uh, incredibly nice guys. And yeah, probably uh, for the three of us, something we're always going to remember. I'm not sure they had any. Jerome, again, for sure had no idea what he was getting into when he mm -hmm. followed you up to yeah. that room. <laughs> but it was uh, like... <laughs> was, it, was it just the two of you? There was like eight of us okay. up there. Yeah. Because okay. yeah. you made that and sound kind of creepy. Yeah. No, but I, he just like, I'm sure he had no idea no, what he was getting no. into. But they were both lovely and gracious. I will also say... Ted, Kevin, and I have all worked at Hockey Alberta. We have all worked this event. I, as a guest, was thinking, I'm just going to mail this in. I'm not going to have to do anything. I'm going to drink my red wine. I'm going to show up and have fun. And suddenly, I'm spending half an hour trying to find mad gabs on my phone <laughs> to play with Jerome McGinley. So I've been to oh, you. <laughs> a lot of events with Ted. <laughs> And I want to say at every single one of them, I have seen a Ted strut where he is walking around like he completely owns the place. <laughs> And this one was extra hilarious because this wasn't even his event. <laughs> he was walking around like it, he was just running the show and it turned out to just be weird backroom oh dear interviews. Yeah. <laughs> you got to act important or they're not going to say yes. My favorite part was when I went to ask Jerome McGinley, of course, he's got people around him and I go up and, and I was like, and it was hot in there. It was a really hot day. They're having some issues with their AC. So I'm already sweating a bunch under my suit jacket. And I, I asked and talked to him a bit and said, hey, like I'm a local radio host. We have a really terrible podcast. And right away, he's looking at me and goes, oh, I don't do podcasts. And my ass crack was like Niagara Falls. I just started sweating. I was like, 
oh, and he goes, oh, wait, do you mean like just tonight? Because I don't call in or anything, but I'll do an interview tonight. So it, it was just that nice. easy again for, for both of them. And yeah, Colby Armstrong too. Uh, it was a ton of fun. I think anyone who knows him watches uh, like spit or listens to spit and chicklets, sees him on, on TV as an, an analyst, uh, just an awesome guy. Uh, and he was part of, I didn't mention like the 2001 Rebels team that won the Memorial Cup. The whole team was inducted. So a lot of them uh, were back. It was pretty cool. But uh, my favorite part of the night was off the air, like when we were done recording and we mentioned to him that there's a former Red Deer Rebel on our podcast. <laughs> and he asked who I said, oh, you don't know who he is, but he's the last 20 year old rookie in WHL history. <laughs> and it was the most sincere, hearty laugh. I've ever heard. And he says, what, do you have a family by then? <laughs> then we showed him your stats, minus one in 07. Yeah, I think I had 20 bingos, though, which wasn't bad. But I think I speak for Andrew, Kev, and Ryan. Like, that was a jealous moment for, for us. Like, Jerome, Hockey Hall of Famer, so famous in Alberta. Mm-hmm. Uh, for what he did in Calgary and and then Colby obviously what he's done with the broadcasting and when he was in the NHL like I was, I was pretty jealous with what you guys had there and I think it's really cool I haven't been here in six months but seeing where <laughs> you guys have taken this podcast and and the partners and and the different celebrities that have come on it's pretty crazy so it's it's pretty fun that I get to come back twice a year and kick <laughs> Kevin's ass back to that couch <laughs> we were we were sitting there a lot and I was kind of like oh they say like Aaron said it was just supposed to be a nice night out for all of us and I thought talk to the people from Hockey Alberta a bit and they also they were very like they said yeah go ahead like if you want to want to do it and uh, so we're going back and forth and I thought why like I will be thinking about this for the rest of my life if I don't at least ask so uh, I went and asked and again shoot your shot like if it was a, a woman I was asking out on a date be a no for sure but I felt pretty confident uh, you know guys like that at those events say yes so uh, yeah and it was I just want to give a shout out to, to Hockey Alberta and RDP something that uh, as former Hockey Alberta employees we've been at working before and this is the first time in Red Deer but it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Craig McTavish was also an inductee but uh, he he got COVID right before the event which uh, he even said on his video that he sent in that he didn't know that was a thing but uh, Shannon Zavados another uh, inductee who is a, a lot of firsts as a female goaltender. I think one of the greatest hockey players in uh, Canadian history maybe in history period uh, Kelly Kissio a former NHL player captain of the Rangers uh, did a lot of great work with the Hitmen. Just recently won uh, uh, Stanley Cup as a scout with the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, maybe a lot of people's favorite, Dave King, who was a longtime coach, gave a, an incredible speech too about the basically the power of coaching. And a uh, Billy Day, who played 19 years in the NHL, also an NHL coach. So yeah, if uh, you obviously, well, you probably weren't there if you're listening to this because we didn't see anyone there that we knew. But uh, get your <laughs> tickets next year because uh, it was a great night out. Quick story on that. Hockey Hall of Fame inductee thing. When we worked at Hockey Alberta, my application is still sitting, and I think it can. I think it can stand for seven years. Yeah. So it, we got to be getting close to that. And I still, I still haven't got in. I talked about all the times on the bus mm. trips and. Like I played so many games. You've been away. You've been away from the game for too long. I actually, I directly got that email, and it was like six days after I started there, and I didn't really know Dustin. It's like, who is this idiot? And he sent like the smallest little thumbnail of like it was like a picture of a picture on someone's phone of him playing at U of L. Please induct me. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, it was. I think it was reasons to be inducted. Please. <laughs> it was the best application. I think they they ever got a couple more years are you going in as a player or a builder both (laughs) (laughs) just to wrap on that ted kind of summarize it but great night put on Uh, i really enjoyed how they set it up in the gym there um obviously it's a gymnasium but they made it look very fancy and very nice are you describing what a gym was (laughs) (laughs) well you You wouldn't know (laughs) we might have forgot yeah both guys were way too nice Mm. and generous like i felt so bad for drone (laughs) like the end of the night end of the night he's like there with his family and like (laughs) ted's just trying to pry him away and (laughs) i'm like trying to help Ted usher him out and he's like obviously the most popular guy in the room so we had to stop like six times for people to get photos I'm like why what am I doing right now ushering Jerome again <laughs> out of this gymnasium like to go to the oh dear back room yeah, interview yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, it yeah. was the Hockey Alberta office, so it wasn't like super sketchy, but it was a it was a little weird. But on that note, too, I do have to give a, a huge shout out to a, a big friend of ours, but a friend of the podcast, uh, Steve Mack, otherwise known as Stove from Hockey Alberta, former colleague of, of ours, or for me, uh, the athlete, Aaron and Dustin. Uh, the reason he was the reason we were able to do all of these interviews because we didn't go in. We had nothing planned. Uh, he's usually there like taking video and all that. And this was the first time ever because RDP was looking after it. He didn't have to take video of like the whole night. He got to actually just sit and do the stuff before, sit and enjoy his night. And halfway through dinner, I went over and I was like, oh, Steve, we, we kind of got this idea. Like, would you be willing to, to record it for us? And he he's done a ton of stuff actually in the past too for the podcast, especially filling in the gaps when uh, Riley Riley's like the busiest guy on the planet. So he's done some video work for us too. Really enjoys the podcast. So yeah, we just want to thank you, Steve, uh, for that because yeah, we could not have done that without you. That was a uh, once in a lifetime opportunity and uh, we appreciate you. And thanks for driving me back and forth to Canmore the other day too. He does it all. <coughs> Gross. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more than a lingering cough at this point, Aaron. It's a problem actually. Ted mentioned whooping cough and I- no, You don't have whooping cough. Yeah. Right? It's not that bad, but it's not good. Whoop. <laughs> That's whooping cough, Aaron. The doctor is in. That's a good idea for a new segment. I'll give some medical. <laughs> oh, no. doctor. The doctor is in. Yeah, I'll give some medical advice. Lawsuit territory. Well, on that note, uh, since we're already doing it, time to talk about everything and nothing all at the same time as we head into shooting the breeze. <laughs> bang, bang. Nice. <laughs> Got it. Nice. Did that you guys a- plan that? No, I didn't it just happened. It coming. That, yeah. that happened organically. That was unprecedented. We've never seen it before. Oh. We'll probably never see it again. He was so happy. Yeah, I've shot the breeze too many times by myself. It's nice to shoot the breeze with somebody else. (laughs) Now, when you say shooting, uh, never mind. (laughs) Shooting the breeze is brought to you by The Gutter, Red Deer's all new bowling alley and the home of Rare Pizza, now available for delivery on Skip the Dishes. Whether it's a day with the family or a night out with friends, make The Gutter your go-to spot for bowling, pizza, and fun. Visit thegutter.ca to book your lane today. My brother ordered pizza from the gutter the other day. Loved it. Nice. I said, if you're getting pizza, rare pizza. Okay. And he did. And then I ate five pizza, five pieces in five one day. Pizzas. <laughs> I didn't eat five pieces. I no wonder you're wearing pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> got, Shea, got but Joey's I did eat five, yeah. <laughs> five pieces of pepperoni pizza. That's from, still a feat. It was yeah. very good. Uh, I guess this was just because we uh, haven't all been together for a while. It's even been a, a little while since we've done a podcast. So uh, just talk about really quick if anyone's done anything interesting this summer and if what you say isn't that interesting, you're just going to get cut. But uh, I, I know there's uh, been uh, lots of different things going on. We mentioned, obviously, uh, the athlete's engagement. That's a, a big one. But Lund, you have to have something going on. Uh, yeah, I went to Sundry. <laughs> <laughs> Sundry. What a glamorous life. The, the swamp donkey in Sundry is quite the place. It's Please got, expand. <laughs> yeah. I Please don't think don't. that's what it's called, is it? What's her real name? <laughs> <laughs> you guys. There you guys. the first big editing decision yeah, of the podcast. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's <laughs> from the couch, too. Yeah. Wow. That's. I was thinking that I was thinking it, and I wish I said it because it was pretty funny. <laughs> Obviously, Couch, Kevin. None, none of goodness. you have been to Sundry before because Swamp Donkey is a bar there. It's mm-hmm. got karaoke. It's got a nice patio. It's there on the weekend and uh, yeah, had a great time in the 35 degree heat. All right. Didn't you also go to Vegas and like win a bunch of money playing the World Poker Tour? I did, That's yeah. That's kind of a little more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we played in the World Series of Poker at the beginning of June this year. Uh, I lost it about seven and a half hours. I got, I don't know, around 12, 1200th place out of 5,000 people. Wow. <laughs> One zero money, but my uncle was playing in a different poker tournament at the World Series and he made it all the way to the final table. I had 5% of him and I won a little bit of money based on his winnings. So yeah, it was, overall, it was a really fun trip. Cool. Um, and once again, it was like 35, 40 degrees there. <laughs> Yeah, I'd go back. I'd go back next year. It's a blast. And you can, they have like 50 or 100 different tournaments. You can buy in from anywhere from $250 to, to $100,000. So there's a game for everyone there. <laughs> no, there's not a game for me because they don't have a $20 buy in. Well, yeah, they do. Just not, not in that. 
tournament. <laughs> I don't think in that city. You can play the penny slots. Yeah, well, I'm talking. That's you can do know, whatever you saying. want in that city. You got twenty yeah. bucks. Anything True. goes in that city. Yeah, <laughs> I played War for twenty bucks a hand with at the Bellagio one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I watched someone play War. I got, I got too nervous. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they were getting murdered. So I. Just... <laughs> I stayed out of it. <laughs> oh, you have a way with words. I'll tell you that much. Thank you. Who wants to follow that up? Yeah. Good luck, guys. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, uh, my wife and I, and we took our kids out to uh, Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. So went out to Nanaimo for a couple of days and then we went to Parksville. Beautiful places uh, at the time here in Red Deer here. It was, you know, heat warnings and it was the same thing out there. Kids loved it. We just rented a car and able to do uh, some hikes and some great kind of outdoor adventure parks they have and just hang out on the beach. Like there, it's where the tide goes out and there's like a kilometer of sand, but during the night or whenever the tide comes in. So like there's crabs everywhere and seashells and the kids, you know, my kids are five to 10 and they just had a blast running around and looking at crabs and playing in the ocean and great place to be. Um, very kid friendly. So if anyone's looking for a good trip, you know, Calgary to Nanaimo direct was like an hour and 10 minutes. Pretty How cheap. How do you drive? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe we were there at the same time. Oh, because I so also, been out there. yes, uh, we, Griff took his paternity leave and we headed out to the West Coast, a little island off Vancouver Island and his uh, parents graciously. <laughs> what? I thought you were going to say paternity test. <laughs> I was like, you, you, you still don't are you the are? father. <laughs> Do you guys get the results? She, she's a climber. He was a climber. It's his. But yeah, we uh, his parents graciously opened up their uh, cabin for us. And we spent almost two glorious weekends out, or two glorious weeks out there. And Only the weekends. Were there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. And it was wonderful. And we also uh, caught a lot of crabs. And uh, <laughs> hey, who didn't? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a Maury episode. You're, you're stealing my summer story. What are you <laughs> <laughs> and found a lot of sea glass, oh, which is what I'm out there for. Yeah. But we drove and it was a very uh, long drive to and from, but we broke it up and it was lovely. And um, yeah, Kenzie got four teeth and Are that's... Like hers or she just found four teeth? Honestly, on the I would have <laughs> loved it more if she had found yeah. teeth, but she grew her own. And four teeth in three weeks is a lot of teeth for a baby, but she did very well with all of that. Hopefully she does a better job than Dustin did at growing teeth. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Oh. I was hoping to get hit from behind her high stick when I was playing hockey. And it happened. And you did. <laughs> Thanks for turning my way every call. And like making I got a contact. No, I got a couple. And your baby just hey, turned listen, one. Oh, oh, wait. We did have a uh, cosmic cowgirl themed birthday party. So for my daughter. You really one did year. steal my whole summer. Sorry. Yeah. Is, does it cosmic just mean like outer space, like astronaut? Yeah. yeah. So they're like, it was an astronaut cowgirl. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that sounds like a party long Very nice. that, that You know what, Kevin, your bachelor party <laughs> might be cosmic cowgirl themed. Somebody also suggested a cosmic cat girl theme. So you're welcome to that as well. Cosmic Batman. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of cosmic options. Dustin, are you planning it? If wow. I can come. <laughs> no, you just no, have to just plan, plan it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, um, I went to the Lund family cabin in Gull Lake. Uh, they promised yeah. me a boat ride, but their, <laughs> lift, <laughs> but their lift wasn't working. So oh, yeah. I just sat on the deck. <laughs> uh, update on that. The lift is working now. So uh, you come out for a boat ride. You owe me one. Yeah. At least you got an invite to the Lund family cabin. <laughs> yeah. It was, we, we talked about it at all the last episodes of the podcast. Yeah, that's course. fine. Yeah, it's fine. I didn't want to go anyway. Um, I'll actually give a shout out to the Alberta Lacrosse Association because uh, Provincials was here and our U13 team went to Provincials and got second, unfortunately. But um, that's, that's pretty good. Red Deer. Yeah. Second out of, uh, I don't know. Sports dad. I don't know the exact amount of teams, but I'm guessing there's around 60 teams in that league. So wow. second is not so bad. We had a really good season, but Red Deer actually showed up and did really well. Uh, there was a U15 a and u15 b team uh, that both won provincials the u17 b team also got uh, second place i believe so lacrosse is awesome it's so underrated if you've never gone to a roughnecks game like it'll blow your mind it's yeah. so much fun it's so cheap compared to an nhl game the sport is it's so underappreciated the alberta lacrosse association did an amazing job um, the tournament was hosted in red deer and sylvan yeah everything was was really well done well put together and uh you know if you if you like a like an exciting fast 
fast moving sport, lacrosse is amazing. Give it a shot. And I know I'll cut this if the answer is no, but like, I don't know much about lacrosse in central Alberta and stuff, but I do hear like, like we talk about minor hockey and all that in Red Deer, but apparently like it's a sport that's picking up, right? And that they do a really good job of here locally. Yeah, it's 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 gaining popularity. Like the NLL um, is expanding finally. And like you don't see a lot of box lacrosse. So box lacrosse is played in a hockey arena with no ice, obviously. But um, U.S. is a lot of field lacrosse and it's a it's a much different game. But box lacrosse is um, super fun. It's super fast pace. Big hits. A lot of hitting and it's full contact mm. basically at U9 and up. It's really entertaining to watch. And, you know, the, probably my favorite thing about it. And so this is coming from a guy who has spent a lot of free time coaching minor sports. The seriousness level with lacrosse is so much less than hockey because there's so many parents who think their kids are just destined to make the show um, in hockey. And you don't get that in lacrosse because there's not really a future there. There's not an opportunity to earn millions of dollars. These NLL guys are making, I think the absolute stars of the league are making maybe 250, 300 a year. And oh, they're getting shoot. the absolute crap beat out of them every every day. Uh, most of these guys are going to work on Monday. And so the the pressure isn't there. Like the parents, obviously any anything that's contact sports with young kids gets a little intense at times, but there's so much less pressure on the kids. It's just a lot of fun and it's a lot more easy going. And uh, if, if you like hockey, like 100% sign your kids up for lacrosse. I think they'll love it. Like, and it's so good for their hand eye. It's so good for, for their endurance with the running and everything. It's, it's not well known enough about in the province and it absolutely deserves the exposure because it's a great sport. And did you guys no, so Canada's national sport. This lacrosse minute yeah. was brought to you by mm-hmm. Andrew Russell. A fun fact: lacrosse is French for the cross. Nice. Mm. That wasn't that fun. <laughs> okay, fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a fact. <laughs> uh, I am going to give Andrew a shout out because we've already uh, given him a lot of shit tonight. But watching like through the hockey season and even now this summer, you were like the the ultimate working sports dad because you remind me of my dad working full time. He coached both me and my sister and like everything. I, and I He'll always say it was worth it and I know you enjoy it. But still, it's always honestly nice, nice to see that. And I know there's uh, lots of people like that. Uh, uh, Walsh is, uh, I don't know how many different sports your kids do. Dustin's a dance dad, but uh, just because I, I, I really want to get that check paid, I wanted, wanted to give Andrew a shout out. Dustin's trying to become a dance coach. Dance actually. dad. Well, just a dance parent. No, right now he is, but he's he's actually, he wants to be a coach at the dance club. That'd be a short, that'd be a short lesson. He's got one move. Bring it on, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. All right. <laughs> uh, hey, that is a good yeah. movie. <laughs> Um, my summer, well, first off, I want to um, just uh, use this opportunity to say I was inspired by Dustin, uh, who's been wor- working at the Outreach Center almost a year now, right? He mm-hmm. does a lot of great work in a not-for-profit. I had a, uh, because I don't have enough side hustles already, but uh, working with a Dress for Success now, kind of on a, a contract basis, doing some donor relations marketing and stuff for them. And uh, someone I think, Dustin, you probably w- work closely with that organization. Didn't know a lot about it, but uh, it's been kind of a cool summer learning all about that and and what they do and the the real Coles notes of it is that they uh, take in clothing donations and then they uh, offer them for women who whether they have to do a court date or a job interview anything like that and can't otherwise afford to ha- have a nice outfit for that they they do the fittings and, and stuff like that so I uh, really quickly just wanted to give them a shout out and uh, and like give the outreach center a shout out as well because uh, summer of Ted has been going great but uh, my favorite part this year has been I've, it's exhausting but I'm not complaining playing in a lot of charity golf tournaments and having the opportunity. Kevin, thank you for inviting me to the uh, Bulldogs one. I have to give a shout out to Dustin and Lund, who both uh, also ran really great golf tournaments this year. Uh, Dustin did the Outreach Center golf tournament. I think no one's surprised out of all the people who could uh, run and execute a golf tournament really well. It's Dustin. Uh, Everyone probably a little more surprised that Lund could do it. I wasn't. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Coming from someone wearing pajamas to (laughs) podcast, that means a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a compliment or a, or a shot, Ted. But it's both. No, in all honesty, both uh, both tournaments were great, Lund. This is what your third year kind of as the chair of that golf tournament. You sold it out. Uh, it was a lot of fun, made a ton of money. And uh, Dustin's tournament wins, though, because I, I won a driver. Yeah, no, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just go back to your dress for success comment, Ted. I did, like, first off, kudos to you for joining that organization and helping a lot of Central Alberta women. Um, I think it's an amazing cause. Aaron and the crew and the board there are amazing and mm-hmm. what they're doing. And they're bringing a lot of attention to what they're doing as well, which has been great for the awareness of, of everything and all the people they're supporting. So kudos to you. That's awesome. Lund, back to Ted's comment. I'm with Ted. Like, 
<laughs> I think what you did was amazing. You're just, you're a different type of planner. You're a late planner. You get everything done. You get everything done. But the there's no before. doubt in my mind that you're going to have it happen. Yeah. It's just a different way than I do. And yeah, so, I don't understand. You just don't, you just don't stress about yeah, it. Yeah. I don't yeah. understand how you do it, but you do it and you do it well. So, I think you did an mm. amazing job with your tournament and that is not a shot. It's a compliment. Yeah. You guys got a really weird way of showing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, oh, it was the Piper Creek Optimist Club tournament. Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned that. You but, oversold yeah. it out. It wasn't just me. We had a whole board yeah, do it too. Totally. It was just But you take it on every year to run it. The first three years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to do this for twenty no, years. But, but first three years is every year. Those are so the most far. important years. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe when you pick up one of these jobs on London Employed, you know, you might not be the chair of that organization anymore, the golf tournament. But yeah, you're doing a hell of a job right now, and and uh, kudos to you. And the hey, team. I appreciate you, man. So uh, speaking of golf tournaments, because the one thing we're what three weeks Dustin away from our, our Chubbs golf tournament. Uh, for those of you who don't know slash don't care, I've never really listened or watched the podcast before. Dustin and uh, well Walsh and Lund were all part of uh, over ten years ago now starting a Happy Gilmore themed golf tournament <laughs> for a couple of friends that's turned into what thirty two people. Yeah, yeah. For the podcast listeners, Walsh has a, a Happy Gilmore <laughs> shirt on and never forget with Chubbs and the alligator and Abe and the, Lincoln, yeah. everyone's favorite Happy Gilmore character. But uh, yeah, it's it's just turned into this amazing tournament. Uh, yeah, one year, I think year three, Dustin decided, let's donate $500 so the wives can uh, get off our backs a little bit. And uh, how like how much did you uh, we raise this year alone, Dustin? And then total, like it's gotten pretty wild. Yeah, so I got to give credit to Graham because it was Graham's idea that we should bring in the Chelsea Who's his aspect. dad? Yeah. Who's Graham? Yeah, my, my father. And so the, mm-hmm. the brand or the apple doesn't fall <laughs> far from the tree but uh we're well, up hey, to daddy <laughs> yeah. oh my god so we're up to seventy nine thousand dollars donated in central alberta and i think we did we're gonna do probably just shy of twenty thousand this year uh, which is pretty insane we've learned a lot along the way it's just like an amazing group of people and uh, outside of just the people who play in it it's it's the friends of those mm-hmm. people and the family of those people who you know lund runs a couple or uh, one of our big fundraisers and it just keeps growing and the people just keep coming back and supporting it and and really that's the donations like none of our actual golf tournament stuff goes to charity but we run a couple events leading up to it to be good in our community and and be good people i guess and Mm -hmm. and make sure we're committed to different causes and and help out as many people while we're doing dumb stuff in different locations and just calgary this year just year 10 last year phoenix was a little pricey but uh it's amazing too like when we look at the the prizes that we get donated right and the local businesses that are now like they almost are like a part of the chubs andrew i know donates every year i think bo's obviously always a a big part of it and uh so many so many other businesses but uh, what i want to talk about this year is uh to make some chubs predictions could be like who's gonna finish best who's gonna finish worst who's going to do what but uh and especially i uh, like for uh andrew and aaron who are uh not invited i don't know maybe maybe start with andrew and aaron who do you think out of the five of us one two three four five is uh gonna maybe put in the best performance it's lund <laughs> but i don't know what you mean by performance but it's okay. lund. Yeah. Uh, well who's gonna golf the best <laughs> yeah lund yeah let's go now that lund is unemployed you've got to think the guy's got a lot of time to play golf but he and doesn't so but he should yeah i've time. i've spent a lot of time golfing with ryan and um his, his game's not phenomenal by any means um kev's a pretty solid golfer i think i've played with ted once maybe and i feel like dustin's gonna mail it in this year and be the worst yeah <gasps> And he doesn't mail it in. He just gets to <laughs> get too tired on the last day. I feel like I feel like he's too busy with his fatherly duties to uh, to have time to golf right now. So I think Dustin's going to finish last. Well, not maybe not last, but last of the Out five of, of you. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like Kev might have a good year this year. Which, Which one? Yeah. Both probably. Walsh. I think it comes down to how much heartburn Lund gets. Because if he gets heartburn, he's not going out and he's well rested and might actually play well. well I will say the heartburn hurts the next day too. Yeah. I will say that I've seen Strybosh walk into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> projectile vomit about three or four times and then come back to the tee box and stripe like a 340 <laughs> yard drive down the down right down the middle of the fairway so if that, kevin drinks heavily i'd say he's got a good shot at uh, finishing guy, pretty high in that standings. guy battles and then he had a car nap while we were waiting for the bus to take us to bows and he was at bows all night so yeah he rallies he but quit. you have to remember he's young well not his forehead but we'll talk about that later yeah <laughs> 
especially his forehead. Yeah, I got yeah. Lund. I got Lund for a twenty fourth place finish, mm, nah. and I got <laughs> I got Strybosch to be the best of us five. Wow. I think I think he's gonna have a good year. He's he's been playing lots of golf. He's excited about marriage. He's got to get that gold jacket to wear at the wedding. Mm, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about that. Wow. I guess you could technically Point. have two shots at it though, right? Yeah. But yeah, okay. We may as well get it done this year, though. Don't be like Lund and leave it to the last minute. Get that jacket now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see if I'm invited first yeah. before I get the jacket. Yeah. Ooh. No, um, my name's Ryan Lund, and I'm going to get third place in this year's tournament. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I probably should finish the highest because I'm cheating and won a, a minus two to start the tournament. But I think, I think again, Walsh, he's finished best out of the five of us the most. And uh, when did you move up like 24 spots last year on the last day? You were the yeah, only person like at TPC Scottsdale to actually shoot their handicap. Yeah. And that's really hurt me this year on my handicap score. I need to, to get out of there. But <laughs> um in my mind, I think that the winner of the Chubbs this year is in this room. Whoa. Whoa. I hope and I'm so. sorry to all you other Chubbies that may, might be mad at that comment, but that's just how I'm feeling right now. But I'm golfing with Dustin tomorrow morning and Graham, so we'll see how that goes. No, I think I'm coming too now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think there's a bad bet between the five of us. Mm. I mean, some years we've had bad years. Like sometimes, I mean, it, sometimes it's all you get handicapped, heartburn. right? So it should all yeah. be even. But it regardless depends on of like sleep, like how much do you go out? How much yeah. do you drink? Am I going to be hung over? Am I going to get hit by a fucking golf ball? Like who knows? <laughs> You don't. You don't know. Yeah, no. Sorry, I was. I was there for the golf ball <laughs> incident. That was you and Lund. Oh, oh, I was already the biggest uh, piece of human garbage. Like so hungover. But I'll tell you what. That the adrenaline after getting hit in the kidney with a, like a line drive off the tee box. That that gets rid of a hangover real quick. <laughs> that was. I don't think I've seen an angrier human in my life. <laughs> oh, but, like, well, it was more that they came up. They didn't come up to say sorry because I, I was mad. So I hit his golf ball into the pond and they come up and like, do you see where the drive went? And I'm not even, I don't have enough bleeps to repeat what I said to them. <laughs> and it wasn't even the guy that hit you. No. It was just his cart yeah. people, his teammates. <laughs> like they, they came up, I couldn't believe, where's, where, where'd Winnicky's drive go? <laughs> it's in the fucking pond because it was in my kidney before. <laughs> After uh, after you got hit, me and Kev both looked at each other and were like, "Why did it have to hit Ted?" <laughs> <laughs> like out of all the people today, why why Ted? This yeah. is you know not going to be fun. being that hungover. I think saved my life because I was bent over sleeping while we were waiting to hit, and that would have hit me like in the back of the head if I was <laughs> sitting upright. So, do you hear that, kids? Drink alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we said that a year ago when we were talking about this too. So message is the same. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if I had to pick in this room, Kevin Walsh. Ooh. Thank you. You're just saying that because your names are the same. Kevin's uh, rule, Kevin man. is going to win. Probably Walsh. <laughs> I think, is, is Lund the only one out of the five of us without a top three finish? Yeah. I mean, if you're not first, you're last though. So what's... Who cares? No, oh, like you could be third, fourth, fifth, sixth, like all the way to 32nd. Oh, look, it's time for the Mummy Minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. Uh, no, okay, that's our Chubbs predictions. Uh, also, uh, least amount of sleep. Uh, we're going to go to me or the athlete. I think the athlete, though, he's usually... I usually put up a good fight every yeah. year. Yeah. I think it's going to Usually go there's uh, some... Yeah, <laughs> Landon Schmidt for sure. <laughs> well, yeah, last year we found ourselves out yeah. later than most... Usually I find my way to some sort of dancing establishment mm. and <laughs> yeah. I'm dancing, not other people. <laughs> he's not and, dancing uh, with other girls, no, like, he's actually, dancing with dudes. Actually with other dudes, like not a word of a lie. It's yeah. usually a gay bar. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was one. That was still the best night. All oh, that was what? two times on the same trip. Yeah. Divas, divas in Saskatoon. That was one of those fun nights we had. Out. Yeah, and then some Vietnamese food. Oh, yeah, that was a good night. Bad, bad next day. All right, there's our Chubbs predictions. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, just before or after. Sorry, this episode comes out. We'll be going on the Chubbs. We'll be posting on social media. You probably don't care. There's always some good pictures and stories that come out of that. Uh, really quick, this is a long shoot in the breeze as predicted. But uh, shout out quick to Bo's Sandwich Club because they are now open. Uh, we got to go there for a bit of a sneak preview as well but uh, it's great to see there's so many um, new places opening up in Red Deer, especially in that Capstone area. But uh, what a great partnership too they have with Troubled Monk where you basically go order your sandwich and you go across the street to Troubled Monk, uh, have a drink and they bring you your food. But uh, Brennan, everyone at Bo's, they just keep on doing more and more cool stuff. Those sandwiches are huge yeah, and, and delicious. You know, me being at MMP 
and Capstone. I'm really happy that it's there. New things seem to be coming to the area. So uh, I think it's a really cool partnership that they have with Troubled Monk and just how it works. And uh, I'm excited uh, for the rest of the summer eating my lunches there. Bring, bring an appetite because I've never met a sandwich I couldn't finish until I went there, uh, which is um, neat. Something new happens every day, I guess. <laughs> Moving on to, uh, to talk about the, the Red Deer and District Chamber of Commerce. Our latest uh, Oh Deer Spotlight is out with the forum and uh, one of the owners, Janessa Marshall, which is I actually learned a lot about the forum doing that interview. I didn't realize it's kind of like they host the place, but they don't run all of the programming and the, the aerials and stuff there. It's where different people go and they utilize the space to teach and all of that. So uh, yeah, go watch it right now on our uh, YouTube page. Again, great work as always by Riley and Fish on that one. And uh, thank you to uh, Janessa and everyone at the forum for doing that. And uh, let, let's introduce a new segment we like to call the Mummy Minute. We're not, We're not even there close yet. To be in there yet. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, staying with the chamber, episode four of Lund Employed is now available to watch on YouTube with Lund trying to join the team at Red Heart Brewing, uh, which we all thought would be a perfect fit. And it was uh, <laughs> until it wasn't. Yeah, no, I don't know. I thought I, I thought I had that one. I did everything they asked. I mean, I did drink on the job, so that was probably <laughs> frowned upon. But uh, it was pretty cool to see everything that they get to do on a daily basis. The the canning process is really neat. It was a little scary how quick you had to can those beers. And it's... It's it's pretty tricky to tap a keg. It's not. It's I remember it being a lot easier. So uh, yeah, big shout out to to Red Heart and all three guys there. They were fantastic. They each gave me tips throughout to, throughout the day, and I think I became a better person for it, even though maybe not a better brewer. So. I've been loving the London Employed episodes, but I think it might be a subliminal thing with you that you don't want a job until the end of the summer because you really have been mm. bringing in some habits that I, I haven't <laughs> necessarily seen from you in the past. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be watching and laughing at it, but I, I, I'm I'm interested to see what the September as we get out of the mm. summer London Employeds look like because I think you might be a little bit better of an employee and really try for those jobs. I think you're taking risks and I love yeah. it. And to be fair, that bar slide. It's pretty sick, eh? I loved yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, we thought the first one wasn't going to work. So we were genuinely shocked <laughs> yeah. that it did. We didn't know what to do yeah. after you that caught is, but it. Every time, oh. every time you go, you surprise us with a couple of things that you do really well. And I'm going to say, I'm going to awkwardly compliment you again. But uh, talking with a lot of people and realizing like, what is it about Lund Employed that makes it so good? And I think you have a really rare quality that you're not afraid to fail. <laughs> uh, like seriously. And that's like, I'll go into it, especially on camera. I'll do something like oh i don't want to mess it up or i don't want to do it wrong and you just go and do it and if you fail you just keep on living life and that's a that is where you're gonna at some point land a real good job because i don't know many people <laughs> honestly that are uh, that just go in and they just do something and hey if i fail i fail whatever you're yeah. shooting your shot yeah. yeah you gotta live outside your comfort zone ted yeah and you do yeah it's uh Hey, I've had a lot of fun doing these and uh, I've got to do a lot of stuff I wouldn't normally have gotten to do if I was working full time, right? So there's always a glass half full sentiment to, to these sort of things. And well, I don't know how no many- full glasses at Red Heart. You, <laughs> yeah. You it... drank a lot. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant all the ones I broke. Oh, that too. Yeah, you broke like <laughs> seven. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, it's nice just crossing items off my list mm. to know like, hey, this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, everyone I've done so far is like, it's been a unique experience. And it's so cool to see like all these small businesses and how much fun they have there and, and how they do things a certain way and what makes them unique. Um, whereas working for um, like like a, a big conglomerate or something is, I mean, it's it's so much more play process. by play, mm. yeah, process, follow, follow the steps. But a place like Red Heart, you kind of just have to get the work done, enjoy doing it, make sure your customers are happy and <laughs> and don't get drunk on the job. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, I had a blast and uh, hopefully people enjoy uh, watching these videos. I think they do. Yeah, and you're uh, doing a great job. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just while we're at it right now to a uh, shout out to Red Heart as always, a uh, great guy. Like we had a lot of fun with them. We knew it was going to be good. But as again, we're sitting here drinking our old beer, uh, which has always been really cool being able to go around, like share it with friends and stuff too. So make sure you go and check out the Red Heart Tap Room whenever you can. I have no idea if they're like, they, it runs out so quick, but another great beer, the summer beer, they're low hanging fruit.
fruit. Uh, I think, Lund, that's what you that's helped can, can yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, got to drink a few of it. It's uh, an unbelievable summer beer. So, uh, yeah, if you see on their social media that it's in stock, go get it right away. I know last time we were there, Dustin bought the last flat before Lund could. So, glad to see you guys are friends again, though. Yeah. yeah. There, that flat's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you, Red Heart. And uh, yeah, we have a couple things in the chamber, huh, pun intended, because the, the Chamber yeah. of Commerce. Yeah. That was my gun chamber. <laughs> like a bullet in the chair. Yeah, no. it's pretty good. Anyways, <laughs> we don't know what's next for Lund, but uh, it's coming eventually and it, it's probably going to be real good. Well, thanks for sticking around with us this far. Um, yeah, we're not we're, done yet. We're real excited to introduce you <laughs> to a new segment we like to call the Mummy Minute. Okay, uh, before we get to that, lastly, <laughs> on the subject of the chamber, uh, I just want to give them a couple shout outs and a couple shout outs in this room. Uh, Business of the Year nominations have been announced and uh, unsurprisingly, uh, I didn't see what the nominations are for, but I have to assume new Business of the Year nominee, uh, the Gutter and Rare Pizza. So congratulations, Dustin Lund, everyone involved. Uh, in the gutter again, um, not not surprised at all. But uh, I, I hope Lund that we we again do the interviews, the live interviews with the the winners. And <laughs> not that I want you guys not to win, but you having to interview the person who just beat you out for new <laughs> business of the year would would be excellent. Oh, I have so. some real salty questions lined up. <laughs> or if you win, you have to interview yourself. Yeah. No, I've got some good questions for that guy too. <laughs> yeah. It, either way, it's a win-win. All right. Well, as these uh, summer, midsummer episodes always do, we're going pretty long. But another segment back in that we haven't done in a long time, and I haven't heard from Andrew Russell in a little bit. He's probably, I have to assume, him and Strybosch stick into that leather couch a little bit. It's a, a touch warm in here, but. Uh, Andrew Russell, I know you've uh, not only been busy being a dad, but busy working and it's been three, four months. So there has to be a pretty good update on the uh, real estate market. Yeah, the market has been a whole bunch of crazy and then now it's kind of toned down a little bit. So we had a really, really crazy spring. Um, people coming in from out of province, from out of country, buying everything up. We had a period there where everything was multiple offers. Everything was selling over list, um, especially stuff like under 500. The, the market was just nuts. And about the last week of May, we started to notice that things chilled out a little bit. And I think basically what happened, I think a lot of buyers just kind of hit the point where they went, this is crazy. We don't want to do this anymore. We don't want to fight for properties and we don't want to overpay. And so initially I thought, well, maybe things are just slowing down because people are waiting to see if the rates come down because the interest rates obviously got adjusted on June 5th. And um, it's been steady ever since. I would say the biggest difference right now is it's under 500 is in massive demand. Over kind of six has slowed down a little bit, but everything's trucking along really well. If you're a homeowner in Alberta or in Central Alberta, then congratulations, your your house value is up. Um, oh. And ultimately, um, you know, if you want to move up, now is the time to do it because the high end market is lagging a little bit. The lower end market is moving really, really well. Honestly, like our, our province, I think for the long term is in good shape. Um, the economy is in really good shape. There's still lots of people wanting to move here. Um, we've seen a bit of a slowdown with the BC and Ontario uh, migration, just largely because those markets have slowed down. I've had people tell me in the Ontario market that um, they're down hundreds of thousands of dollars in some of those segments. I've got a friend that's in uh, Caledon who's in agent out there, uh, which is about an hour outside of Toronto. And he told me that their average is down two to 300,000. Granted, they're, we're talking like 1.5, 1.7 million dollar properties. Um, <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's a pretty big price shift from some of those. Um, and so, yeah, they've, they've definitely lost some equity. And so that that has slowed things down a little bit. Um, and now that we're, we're kind of into the summer, so July slowed down, I think largely because a lot of people went on holidays. I think we're seeing a lot of, um, of people take earlier holidays now where they don't want to go in August because they're concerned about being smoked out. And believe it or not, like weather has an impact on real estate. Forest fires has an impact on real estate. And uh, so the verdict is out or it's to be seen yet if, if we see an increase on things in August. But overall... The market is steady. Things are good. Uh, if you have a house under 500, it's in high demand and you're going to get good dollar for it. And if you can afford to upgrade, um, it's a great time to do it. Um, the other thing I'll throw out too is that today or this morning, they just dropped the rates again. So the Bank of Canada rate went down another 0.25. So we're down 0.5%. Uh, it's down to 4.5% now. They are aiming for a target of 3%. Um, and I, I think we're going to see that probably within the next 12 to 18 months. So all in all, things are looking good. Again, Alberta is still insanely attractive price wise for real estate and uh, and it's a safe investment right now. Well, it sounds like a good time to upgrade to our forever home. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm glad you laughed instead of just <laughs> gave me an eviction notice. So you're, yeah. so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> I didn't listen to one word Andrew said because I was just waiting to make that joke. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, Andrew, uh, for the update. It's It's been a while. And hey, we'll catch up with you in another three, four months. Yeah, see you in the new year. This Andrew Russell Market Minute was brought to you by Andrew Russell and Associates at Remax Real Estate, the trusted experts for all things real estate in central Alberta. Skip the sales pitch and get real advice from real people who offer real results. Visit their website at andrewrussell.ca. And? Are we still doing this? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I want to tell him Lundy sent you. Hey, do one. One for old time's sake. And tell him Lundy sent you. <laughs> Good thing we gave you time to smoke three packs of cigarettes. <laughs> <Yeah. before> we... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it worked. All right. Well, I am very excited. I don't know if anyone else is, but personally, very excited. We're going to shake things up a little bit, heading into a brand new segment that coworker Erin has been wanting to try out for a while now. And for some reason, she's enlisted Lund to help her out uh, with this one. But uh, let's get in to the Oh Dear Mommy Minute. Wow, wow, wow. Sound effects guy gets yeah. him again. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> The Oh Dear Mummy Minute is brought to you by Hebe Beauty Bar, helping you become the most confident and vibrant version of yourself. With a team of dedicated medical aesthetics experts and wide range of proven services and treatments, Hebe can help you work towards your beauty and anti-aging goals with pride. Book your next appointment today at hebebeautybar.ca. I wasn't sure how to write this into the ad read, but uh, Kendra told me to, to, to plug. They have a new machine at Hebe Beauty Bar called the Pico Sure. Pico Sure. I don't Pico Sure. Sure. That's basically it's for tattoo removals. Uh, the first in Red Deer to have that technology. So if you want to get rid of a tattoo that you deeply regret, which I can't relate to at all, but uh, Hebe Beauty Bar now offers that service as well. I want to give a, a shout out too because we didn't get a chance to last episode to kind of debrief from the interview with Hebe Beauty Bar because we did the episode after. But a shout out again to, to Kendra and Samantha. Uh, it was really fun doing the on location interview there. We did an, a bit of an, the interview while I got. Botox or uh, was it Disport in my forehead? Uh, the athlete and coworker Aaron also got some too. And like my like my forehead, I never really even thought I I would need it, but like my forehead looks incredible. Look at this. Look, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, frown, Kevin. Nothing. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, you guys all look You're, great. And like before, your forehead looked like the oldest woman in the village. Yeah. So now, now it's you like look the lady great. To the granny from Snow White. Yeah, yeah. or Cruella Duvel. <laughs> the right? old, the Did oldest. Oh yeah, right, right, right. right. Yeah. That's right. Anyone with wrinkles, that's who you look. <laughs> yeah. Like. But no, a very interesting interview too. I know we packed a lot of us in there, and for Aaron, you knew a little more about it. But for the rest of us, it was very educational. No, I loved it. I definitely have to go in for a little bit of a touch up. I. Um, being postpartum and expressive, I've overcome a lot of the uh, minimal injection that they tried to do, but I absolutely love the results and a hundred percent will be uh, going back. So yeah, if you've been thinking about honestly, any of the treatments that they have, go do a um, consult. Uh, they were wonderful and friendly and they're not going to tell you everything that's wrong with your face. They're just there to support you in whatever your goals are. If my friends are going to get poked by something, Count me in. Wow. That's a good friend. <laughs> Dustin, write that down for the bachelor party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when we were there for the interview, I was shocked to hear how old and disgusting my forehead looked. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, it, I, I don't think it was too bad. I just had a lot of dynamic lines. Mm. You smile that, a lot. I smile a lot. I got to have an active forehead. We're just expressive, Kevin. And Erin said I had the worst crow's feet around my eyes that she's ever seen. It was like the cast of Dumbo was on your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like it's Cruella de Vil. <laughs> yeah. Right? Is right. it time for the mommy minute? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then next thing you know, I get some Dysport in there and five days later, can't even move. This is yeah. fantastic. And right before your big proposal too. Like it worked out it, great. Yeah, it and was And they'll perfect. see you right before the wedding. Alex, is that why you Probably, said yes? Yeah. Is because you had no wrinkles? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a very resounding yes that yeah. we got off camera. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you stuck around this long, <laughs> you're going to be super excited about our next segment. We're trying it out for the first time. Uh, we'll see how it goes. She's going to try and keep it under a minute. Uh, Aaron with the Mummy Minute. 
All right. So we're testing this out. I'll try and keep it to a minute. But as a new mother, there were a lot of services in Red Deer that I had no idea about that I absolutely loved and leaned on during those either in our prenatal stage or postpartum. And so a few of those are uh, prenatal education programs. We went to the Johnston Crossing Community Health Center, did our classes in person, and they were great and really gave us an idea of kind of what we were in for. I was really lucky because having a husband who works as a fire medic, he's delivered babies, he could give you a tour of the Red Deer Hospital. So we didn't have to worry about a lot of those things. We were really comfortable and confident with that. But in terms of uh, what to expect when you're expecting was absolutely new to us. And they were wonderful there. And one of the programs that they run that I found the most uh, valuable by far was their lactation drop-in group. So every Tuesday, Tuesday from 10 to 1130. If you are lactating, if you are planning to breastfeed, if you are breastfeeding, they do um, a drop-in group at the Parkland Mall, right by the Ardenes. There's a little sign out. They've got their public health nurses there. They've got professional and peer support for your infant feeding goals. They were absolutely wonderful. And not only was it kind of a, a comfortable space to take a newborn baby to those first few weeks when as a new mother with no experience with babies was wonderful. They helped me with any of my breastfeeding questions, but have also been a huge support in that first year postpartum and were a wonderful resource to go to for everything. And one of the other absolutely wonderful um, programs that we went to that I wish that I had started earlier, I waited until Kenzie was... I think we were three or four months old before I took her, but if what are you, you Lund, Jeez. <laughs> you get on that quicker. If you've got an infant or a toddler, the Baby Fun program, it's a free library program that they'll be starting up again in the fall. It's, it was dropping over the summer, but they're on a bit of a hiatus um, with everybody on summer vacations. But the uh, Red Deer Public Library has details. You can go register there Mondays, Thursday, Friday at 11 at the different libraries. So downtown the Daw and Timberlands, but it's a uh, half hour program. It was absolutely one of the best things that we did for uh, ourselves and our daughter. They do songs, they do stories, but also a ton of interaction with other kids their age and a lot of other moms. And it was a wonderful place to hang out after the program. I had taken Kenzie for a couple of months and then my husband Griff took her and he was like, he thought that I I loved it, which like it's a lovely program, but he thought that I really enjoyed the time there. When he took her, he realized Kenzie loved it. The songs, the clapping, the shaker eggs that like the kids have a blast. Kenzie kissed a few boys and girls Ooh. there. Oh. And that you gotta was, keep your options. That was, open. Oh, yeah, that was fun for her. <laughs> um, but also just seeing kids that were a little more advanced walking and talking and waving. Uh, she learned a ton of skills there just in this half hour drop in program or registered in the fall and the spring. But it was absolutely the public library programs for kids cannot say enough great things about. So um, those are just kind of a few free the um, prenatal education there is a cost to you can do it online or in person but the lactation group and the uh, library group were absolutely uh, lifesavers for us was it weird though seeing Dustin at the sing-alongs at the library without any kids I honestly have asked Dustin about a lot of programs <laughs> that he has done with his children because I know you've done a lot too so I thought you were going to say the breastfeeding group <laughs> no no <laughs> oh my no, I don't wanna, that's, that's a, a weird joke to no no that's <laughs> Something. I know the importance of that. I am a grown up that I can hear lactation without without laughing, and I know that's a, a very important thing. So I echo all laugh. Aaron's comments because yeah. well, I you did do like I did a lot of the like right? I didn't do it, but my wife oh. did a lot of the lactation stuff and, yeah. and the breastfeeding groups, and we've done the music stuff with mm -hmm. Kevin's kids and like all those things. I echo every comment you just said. Yeah. So very successful, mommy minute. Thanks mm -hmm. for leading that in about ten times, Lund. We finally got her done, <laughs> yeah. and I think Aaron did a great job. Yeah, yeah, and if. If you do have any programs that you want highlighted, um, absolutely hit us up at uh, the Oh Dear podcast and we'd love to, mm -hmm. to start to kind of highlight a few of these services that are not just beer related in town. Mm. And Lund, anything to add or did she nail it? Yeah. If you guys have any babies kicking around, Aaron would love to take one in. <laughs> 
well, we have one, <laughs> one, and that's done. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so that's a hard no on the babies. <laughs> Where are we going to follow up the mommy minute with the who's your daddy minute? Yeah, that's that's next month's segment. That's, <laughs> that's after hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, good job. The, the first mommy minute. And I know in a room with people who uh, can't really relate might be tough, but I know there's a lot of people out there. I think like Dustin's in his family alone, they've got like 19 newborns. So yeah. <laughs> what do you have? What do you have? Three, three new nieces and nephews in the span of like a week. Yeah, we are up to uh, nine, or I guess seven nieces and nephews, and they're all five and under. Oh, with and, is... and in my two, so it's nine. Oh, that's Insane. a lot. In yeah. ten years, you're fucked. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's keep things rolling, which has been a, a struggle tonight, but it is time to move into Deer Call. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost an ambulance, Dustin. <laughs> Coming it's not hunting deer. season, Kevin. Deer that just got shot by Walsh. <laughs> Going to the deer hospital. Is there a deer doctor in here? <laughs> All right, I think I think we're ready for it. Yeah. Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause with $2 from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Cilantro and Chive, your favorite new destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversation and fun. It's just that simple. All right. Well, as always, we put a uh, deer call out onto our Instagram and Facebook pages. Uh, just asking a simple question. Uh, every time you see that, if you comment, give us your answer. You're going to be entered to win one of two $25 cilantro and chive gift cards. You're welcome. Contagious. Yeah. I know. No, that was just a burp. Uh, once again, uh, as we've been kind of doing all night, just really mailing it in this summer, taking the easy way out, a reused a deer call from years past, but uh, we have lots of uh, new listeners and followers, new people on the podcast. It did yield a lot of responses and generated uh, some pretty good conversation. So we once again asked for your biggest pet peeves. Uh, one of our gift card winners, Josh, this is actually maybe my favorite one on there because I didn't realize I hated it until he said this, uh, double doors and one of the doors is always locked. Mm -hmm. Why? And it's never the same one. It's never just the left door and never just the right door. Well, it's I a security trying. issue. Why? <laughs> Why? Because they're trying to stop the thieves. Because you'd they... steal the booze in the liquor store and then you'd run into the, into the door. But it then you open. just go to the... <laughs> yeah, but you already, yeah, but you you already, already knocked the door. You lose right. precious seconds. It I is. never thought I, of it like I that. I do think that's maybe not in all cases, but in some cases for sure. Interesting. Yeah. Or they just like making people look like jackasses. Maybe those doors don't work. Because it's like when you plug in USB, like you do it the right way, but it doesn't go in. Then you go to the other door that's locked and then you go back to the first door. You're talking about USB stud? Yes. <laughs> Uh, maybe not. Uh, our other winner, Ricky, uh, said people who butt in lines. And I know that's very coming on the heels of a Westerner days and such. But I don't know. I It depends. If someone else is in line that I know, look, like if I, I put in the time and effort to make friends with someone over the years, I'm going to take advantage and skip the line. Well, what's that called uh, when you're when you're chatting with someone to sneakily go behind oh. them in line? Being it's got a dick? Yeah, it's got a name though. Oh. It's like a... Budging? Yeah, but it's got a really cool. What, did, what, would, what was it like a monkey budge or whatever? Where it was you something would like, like go that. Behind? Monkey switch. Oh. Monkey, yeah, something like that. It, it's actually one of the things too. When you travel, you realize that a lot of countries and cultures don't have the same line etiquette that North America does. In North America, it is a lot. You've got feet Spaced. between you, but you know the first time you're you're traveling and realize that sometimes a line is not a line. It's just you push your way to the front. It is very frustrating. I think the worst than that is people who stand near the line but aren't in the line oh, and, you have to, yeah. uh, and then people line up behind them yes. and then like 10 minutes later oh we're not in line yeah um this is actually there's a couple walking related ones so i'm going to group them all together so let's just say walking be. in general yeah. well yeah. Pet peeve. <laughs> but, yeah you have the technology to never walk again <laughs> that's your pet peeve is just just having walk. to walk. just walking yeah abby audrey and shane all said slow walkers oh just i didn't get the first henderson on instagram said when people drag their feet when they walk uh sam said when someone doesn't move over on the sidewalk yep. which is the worst and i like i'm sorry most old ladies you're very nice but your side Sidewalk etiquette is so terrible. 
Oh, so it's a left shoulder to left shoulder. It's like you're driving a car. Come on. But I, I don't know, slow walkers, I have a lot of pet peeves because I'm just a passionate person and I have a zest for life. Wear my feelings on my sleeves. But slow walkers is up there, especially like for people who stop dead, like in a busy mall or whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you like there are other people around you and it's the same as, as driving, right? It's like, but oh, slow walkers are the worst, yeah. especially when, and Kevin, the athlete could probably relate to this. When you have to go to the bathroom real bad, <laughs> And someone's walking slow. Oh, my God. Uh, especially on the path, because that's where in the woods is where you do most of your work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't thinking specifically to go poop or pee in the woods. <laughs> but my homework of bringing a pet peeve was absolutely uh, path etiquette. Mm. Like, as someone who is on the path, there's so many people out there who like don't understand that they're not the only people who use the pass. And if you're walking with a group of four, you don't need to go four across. Maybe try two and two because there's probably someone behind you who's trying to pass. Sorry, I'm very passionate about this. Yeah. It makes me very mad. Use your bell, buddy. Oh, I don't have a bell bells. when I'm running. Ding, ding. Yeah. Maybe that's your problem. Probably, you should wear, you probably should just wear one. tooting my way down the path. <laughs> Yeah, there's a horn being honked. It's just a, it's a fog horn. Some uh, of us are social walkers. Yeah, but that's fine. But then just be aware of your surroundings. I'm just, I'm poking the bear <laughs> yeah. here. Aaron, holy. As someone who goes with frequent friendship walks with Ted and Kevin, talk about a social walker. I've never seen you out there. Oh, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> the body shape would say okay. yes, but you know what my pet peeve is? Uh, it being asked to go on friendship walks. Oh well, yeah, that. But I was gonna, I was gonna say liars. <laughs> you don't you know, know my pet peeve is <laughs> not you being don't invited before noon. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was going to say not being invited yeah, on friendship me. walks, oh. but you've been we're, invited. We're, we're not at the part yeah. where we get to our pet peeves. Sorry. We'll, we'll revisit oh, okay. it. Uh, Alyssa said a good one too. That again is, uh, it is more uh, path etiquette related. But Alyssa said when uh, you're walking or running by someone and you say hi and they don't say hi back or they look down, mm. which is like, I kind of do it. I just... I get it. You're like, you're just walking. I just always feel like a jackass when I do that and no one says anything back. Sometimes I get surprised by the highs and mm. you just get like the, like, put your lips away smile from me because I didn't expect the high, but I was prepared for it, but I wasn't. So, but it, I, I get some it. Some kind of response yes. at least is better yes. than none. I, I think this is just a very typical, probably Canadian thing yeah. where... Yeah. If I say hi, say hi back. Yeah. yeah. And I like, like the smile. Wor worse than me is when I'm out there running, uh, don't, don't look at me and say, good job. No one ever sees the athlete running and says, oh, good job. Keep going. Yeah. But they see me and they hear me just. <laughs> and they look, man, there's no way that guy should be running. I'm going to tell him good Keep job. Keep going, man. Yeah. It is like the most accidental backhanded compliment it's of true. all time. And yeah. no one ever says anything to Kevin. No, but you and I get it yeah. a lot. Yeah. No. Good job. <laughs> Um, more path etiquette. Samantha from Hebe Beauty Bar uh, said people who don't pick up their dog poop. Yeah. Or for yeah. Kevin could be other the human poop. <laughs> that's just not even that's not even a path thing. No, that's it's just, just in general. Actual yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean it depends where the poop is. It doesn't. Yeah, if they go poop in the forest, it's fine. Clean up after yourselves. Yeah. Especially in a walking area though. Yeah. 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 Or someone else's lawn. Like that's always yeah. bad too. Um Alois said uh this one uh is probably most people can agree with this one. When someone is rude or dismissive to wait staff. Yep. That mm -hmm. is oh, that is the, like if you're on a first date and the person you're with is just like right away rude. And Instant like, red flag. Yeah. Ick, ick, ick. Uh, Sarah said people using speakerphone in public. Uh, and also uh, Morgan and Aaron said people who watch their videos on their phone with full volume. Again, that's just like being unaware that other people are around you. I'd say it's just being disrespectful to your yeah. surroundings yeah. and to others. Yeah. yeah. I don't get people who use speakerphone like, like this. It's not like you're going hands free. You're holding your hand in front of your face instead of beside your I'm face. a big speakerphone uh, lover. However, I don't want to do it in front of no at other home people. whatever right Lon, you're a big speaker phone guy yeah, too. yeah you're just doing the comfort of your own home yeah, yeah just at home yeah at the barn when there's no one around yeah at the home or the barn me too yeah. um this one really relates to uh well yeah, kevin and his new fiance showing up uh 15 minutes after everyone else tonight but jennifer and michaela said being late Ooh, this uh, is awkward. i was told a time for recording and i was 15 minutes early for that time I, first of all, I'm shocked by that. Not because you're not on time. My pet peeve, and Ted, I'm just going to jump ahead here, is people who make me late. 
If I'm going to yes. be late on my own, I find that very frustrating, but I can own that. If other people are late, I truly do not care. If we are going together and you make me late, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Says Sean McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> she actually is very on time. It is a shot at my husband mm, okay, okay. and a note to Alex. <laughs> oh, pan saying. camera, pan camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going <laughs> to. We need to be able to pan <laughs> Causing problems yeah. here. <laughs> well, speaking of, don't worry, there's going to be another domestic again right away, and it's not going to be Kevin and Alex. Uh, Lindsay. I, I didn't put her up to this. She said, uh, when people leave shoes in the oh, doorway. Yeah, yeah. That's shocking. <laughs> Which, you know what? Since that episode, Lund does not do that anymore. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly, Ted doesn't do it either anymore. So <laughs> I never did it. Oh, you always I put them near. You I put them did. near the doorway, but not You have right 18 the pairs of shoes up there, man. Yeah, I got to look good. Yeah. You <laughs> know, for every, every day of the month, apparently. We could solve this problem by getting you a bigger house. Yeah. Just saying. Um... Oh, Kayleen and Jenny said people who don't use their signal light. Uh, Lindsay said people who tailgate flip you the bird when they're in the wrong. Well, uh, luckily, when I do that, I'm always right. And uh, people who drive too slow, which is the worst. Or like, leave their signal lights on. Mm, well, they just want to announce the, their turn eventually. Or that they turned five minutes ago and they did it. Cool. Stop. To be fair, everyone's done that before. Yeah. Sure. But some people do it all the time. Or people who are like, yeah, it's 60, speed limits save lives. It doesn't mean you have to go 52. Like it's 10.05, I'm done work, I'm tired, I want to get home and nap. <laughs> and they're delaying me by three minutes by driving too slow. Note that that's 10.05 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to specify, but okay, fine. This is a kind of a Ken, Kendria, Kendra, Kendria uh, said spelling and grammar mistakes on important signage, social media posts. Uh, and uh, for me, it's text messaging. I know it's just texting. But I never know if Dustin's making a statement or telling, like asking a question because we'll be talking about something or someone and he'll just, all he'll say is, just text him. And I don't know if he's saying you should just text him or I just texted him. And it's different every time. I don't like to give Dustin a hard time because I think you're wonderful. However, I did get two texts about him being at the front door tonight to let him in. That <laughs> I actually wasn't sure what was happening and what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so, let me so, in. Yeah. It's not, none of those things are what you said. You said, can you just get there? You're, you just get there. C-N you let me in. <laughs> and I was it, like, it's, you just get there. Is Did you just get there? Yeah. He saw me no get there. Fair, I don't know. But. He gets mad when you don't answer his question properly because you don't know what he's saying. Took English 20-2. Yeah. <laughs> did you pass it? Yeah, surprisingly. Did you pass it? 54. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a little high. You know what? You know what, Dust? I'm going to take your side on this because most of the time I know what you're trying to say and everyone else does too. And my pet peeve is when people correct someone in the group chat when it's very clearly it was an honest spelling yes. stick and everyone else yeah. knows what it is and now you're just correcting it just to make yourself seem smarter and educated but that's, that's annoying no, that's, that's annoying I as hell I do agree with that as well what I if mean, you do it as a joke because everyone knows that it's a joke no, no the no one okay, knows well, it no one knows a it's a joke peeve. oh okay well I'm just gonna keep doing it well then it's, so, it's just gonna be a pet pet peeve yeah. Okay. You're going to no. see some shoes on your stairs pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pull out that yeah. extra box. Shoes this are coming out. Uh, yeah. The last one, and this is my number one one, is uh, Dave Teagan and Wendy all said people who chew with their mouth open. Yeah. Like how self, uh, uh, I'm not, it's, and like I have what, like that, what's it, misophonia or whatever. Like uh, honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. editing this podcast is really tough for me because I hear like people, you know, you start talking, people do the lip smacks and all that. And that's just pe like what people do. So I don't get too mad, but it's very easy to not chew with your mouth open. Yeah, you know what, Ted? <laughs> I totally know what you mean on that. I Why did you change your voice? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what, Ted? I uh, I don't think I agree with you. Hey, see? I don't, that doesn't bother me. You ever heard of that show, that um, um, Mad Men? <laughs> what's, it, what's it about? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh, that's it for the the what people said. So now we can go through and to do everyone's mind. I was going to say back when we were talking about driving, my biggest one in it, I don't know why it's so bad at certain spots in Red Deer too, is people who take too long to get going when the light turns green, yeah. especially on an advanced green. Like it's they're, the they're corner, busy texting. Yeah. The, the corner of 32nd or yeah, 32nd and uh, uh, 30th right? Like kind of by the the high schools there. That one like is an advanced green that six cars should get through. And every time there's two because someone just like, are they Fred Flintstoning to get their car going? I don't know. Well, it's because they don't pull into the, into the intersection yeah. when but they're making a left-hand turn. But it's an advanced turn. green. So they, and they just take so long to turn. And it's like, you're, you can go 50. You're not going to crash probably. But that is, and I don't know why it's so bad, especially like in that intersection more than anything. But uh, like, if they, you know what? I, I never, ever text and drive so i always get going really quick oh yeah you're a saint <laughs> no i text and drive but i also fucking burn it off the line on a green light there you go that's honest that's <laughs> yeah. honest. i like that yeah okay, oh, no, but- i don't i don't have any pet peeves you just had one i hey i i, I just let it wash over me it's gone now <laughs> I'll jump in on the loud chewer thing. Um, it's just for me the sound of chewing period like when i'm sitting down with my wife and kids for dinner I have to turn music on because if I can hear them chewing, it like enrages me. I can't explain it. I don't know why. And I do it myself sometimes where my wife just will like look at me oh. and be like, you are chewing yeah, out right even now. you like faking it. I, that actually like makes me shudder. My husband okay, gets real enough. mad when I do snacks in bed. Snacks. Like real <laughs> mad. <laughs> The wrappers, the <laughs> chewing. He's no, he'll he'll actually get up and leave the bedroom. So no bed snacks. Oh. Can we talk about bamboo utensils that they're trying to force down our throats that yeah. have the worst mm. mouth feel of anything mm. I've ever it makes me want to gag. Is, is that your new pet peeve? It honestly is. I went to McDonald's to get some ice cream and they gave me a bamboo spoon. Ugh. And I oh. had to use my like backup car spoon. <laughs> 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 backup. Can we so, talk? So that means you have a primary car spoon. Yeah. And then a backup. Yeah, I have like car primary cutlery. ones in the wash. Yeah, probably. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, have car cutlery oh. because they're trying to give you which bamboo's great. Then you wash not it in down my mouth with a soggy yeah. straw. Ugh. All right, mine's. I know the rules of the road, and I know that bikes are allowed on the road. But oh my get god, em. get them, get them! But pick a lane. You are a I vehicle, can't. or you are a pedestrian. You don't get to be both yeah. when it suits you. I don't like it. I uh, no. <laughs> we all had bike lanes right. in Red Deer for a while. You can't have bike lanes in a place that has bike lanes for six months of the year. Vancouver. Don't we still have works. bike lanes here? Yeah, Maybe the odd, yeah. like the odd one, yeah. But if you want to bike, this is my opinion. If you want to bike on the road, you got to be able to go the speed limit. So electric bikes and the e-bikes mm. and the stuff like that. And Strybosch. And Strybosch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it's heavy traffic, and I mean heavy traffic in Red Deer is not heavy traffic, but if you're holding up both lanes because you're a bike in a lane and there's a perfectly wide sidewalk right beside you i can't handle it that sounds rough man well you, you yeah. agree or no yeah, yeah I it's just more too like if you're I, a very like again like i'm a bike on the road so i own the road type of attitude right there's like signs yield to me there's yeah. signs they say share the road lighten up man i don't want it. <laughs> but you have to get off and walk oh. across a crosswalk <laughs> you don't get to bike across the crosswalk Right. One, what kind of bikes are you riding if that's what you thought? His doesn't have a seat. Honestly, I think about your bike accident a lot, though, when your front wheel came off. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm off, by, I'm off bikes for a while. Yeah. yeah. So, that also is a pet peeve. Yeah. When you're- oh, thank you. That's my pet peeve is when the fucking front wheel falls off. <laughs> exactly. There we go. That's my pet yeah. peeve still. Uh, I have a gym pet peeve and that is when people don't wipe down their equipment or their benches after they're done using something. Probably a little personal because I run a gym and see it too many times, but you're gross. Everyone there is gross. You're all sweaty. Mm -hmm. There's lots of germs. Not Dustin. There's like, he doesn't have to wipe down. If you go to a good gym, they're going to have disinfectant wipes or towels or something like a spray bottle to spray it down. Take two seconds. You need the rest anyways. Just go do it. So, I'll, I'm going to provide an illustrative example Ooh. for mine. Good. Um, so, I have this friend and he's like, hey, pick me up for hockey at 6.30. Mm. And like this friend, I only live two blocks from him. <clears throat> so, we've already agreed like 6.30, I'll pick you up. So, then I text him like right before I leave my house because it's like a minute drive. Yeah. Hey, I'll be there in like a minute or two. Be ready. And then I can see he didn't even read the text. So, I'm like, huh. So, then I get there and then I sit in front of his house for like seven minutes. Mm-hmm. And then I finally see like movement in his house. 
And then he like, I don't know, his garage door is broken, so he can't open it properly. So he's like <laughs> screwing around in his garage. And so anyways, it's kind of tied to Aaron's where it's like people make you late. So yeah, that's mine. Are, yeah. are we now, am I, are we talking about the same guy when he texts me and says, can I get a ride? He said, yeah, I'm leaving at seven. And he goes, can you make it 7.30? 7.30 works better for me to have you pick me up. <laughs> you could say no. You were talking about Dustin, right? Yes. Okay, yes, yeah. Yes. You could say no. I've had that too, where he's not, I see him walking around inside his kitchen there with a shirt off and this guy's not ready to go. <laughs> or maybe he is. I don't know. I'm pretty on time most of the time. Uh, I don't know. I don't think no. so. What yeah. are you talking about, Teal Hat? <laughs> I'm on time. Actually, Lund is I'm pretty good for being on time. Yeah. He may not get ready to go until two minutes. Like, he'll get in the shower two minutes before we leave, but he's ready to go in two minutes. Yeah. There, I don't, I don't okay. have your back much, but I, I did there. All right. <laughs> this uh, Thank you, as always, to everyone who participated in our latest Deer Call. A huge response, like we saw to that one, which is unsurprising. Everyone likes to let off a little steam, get their pet peeves off their chest. And if uh, one of your pet peeves is answering deer call but not having your answer read off on the podcast uh, we apologize but uh, so many answers there we had to, to whittle the list down i'd be surprised if even half of them made it on here but hey that's showbiz so uh, uh don't let that deter you still keep your eyes open on uh, social media all the time for our latest deer call uh keep on commenting for your chance to win a 25 five dollar gift card to cilantro and chive all right. Well, I know, yeah, Aaron, it's, it's it's getting late, but in keeping with the theme of me completely mailing it in this summer when it comes to the podcast, did not come up with a new, fun, unique game for us to play at the end of this episode. Instead, we're going back to another old favorite of ours and playing Things in a Box. <sighs> Things? No. Whoa. Stop, <laughs> Ted. I'm going to... Aaron speaking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm poor. We can- <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can do this. All right. <laughs> Things in a Box is brought to you by Tempo, now open in Gasoline Alley. Tempo gas bars are proudly Canadian and deeply rooted in the community. When you choose Tempo, you're supporting local businesses and families. And with Westway Rewards, your journey is even more rewarding. Earn $5 in free fuel when you join today. Visit westwayrewards.ca to start earning today. Day. Tempo Gas Bars, local for everyone. Uh, but yeah, really quick, uh, yet another new partner for the podcast in Tempo, which is uh, always exciting. A name that's pretty new to Red Deer. I have a friend who, who works for Tempo and uh, who, as we heard, just opened a new gas station in Gasoline Alley. So they're interested in working with us, which is pretty cool. It actually was Lund employed uh, that really reeled them in. So uh, good job, Lundy. But uh, always cool when we can bring in new partners like that. And uh, spoiler alert, yeah, they might actually be interested interested in giving Lund a chance to work there. So uh, stay tuned for that in the future. Um, yeah, I didn't really know much about Tempo, but I learned they're fueled by co-op, very locally minded, a uh, great fit for us. So thank you uh, to Tempo for coming on board. And I guess we better give Julia a shout out because uh, check hasn't cleared yet and she'd be mad if we didn't say thank you. So yeah, Julia, hopefully the, <laughs> hopefully the money's good. But all right, let's get into it. It is getting late. Uh, things in a box, very simple. There's seven of us. Everyone's going to take a turn reading a card, which means there's always going to be six people uh, giving an answer. We just read off the card. Everyone gives the answer, put it in the middle randomly, and the person reading the card is going to pick the best answer. Uh, Through seven rounds, whoever has the most correct. Uh, We always do like these bets and stuff that never get paid off. I watched Lund mow his own lawn today, which was, uh, yeah, which is the bullshit, to be honest. But uh, uh, this one, really simple. The winner's getting a flat of beer from Red Heart. Probably low-hanging fruit um, because, you know, if I give you old beer, that's kind of a, a cop out because we have lots of that. But we're going to go out and actually uh, purchase a flat of that. So uh, it's that simple. Uh, we'll get right into it here. And uh, who wants to read their card first? I'll go first. Things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on the right track. <laughs> the, Things. There should be an award for. God damn it. I have a filthy mind. <laughs> Reunite. No, I can't say that. I can't say that in public or on a podcast. Not, a, not on provincial TV. <laughs> Yeah, cross the line. All right. Go there. You're going to have to cut mine out. Things there should be an award for. I guess technically there is an award for mine. Fast walkers. Ooh. Getting ahead. I, I, Best backyard pop-up pool. Ooh. Ooh. That's nice. That's better Teal than mine. Teal hats. 
<laughs> oh, someone! Ooh. Everyone's playing the player here. Most mummy minute mentions. <laughs> now nah, I think you got that one. <laughs> that Biggest a- poops in the woods. I think he spelled poops wrong. <laughs> Biggest <laughs> pups in the woods. Yeah. Biggest poops in the woods. These are all really creative answers. Really thoughtful answers. There's, there is one that is obviously Aaron's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's technically awards for that already. Yeah, so. that's true. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Biggest poops. Oh, one. I, I, I knew it was Dustin's because he couldn't read the writing. Yeah, <laughs> I, like it's. If it was just biggest poops, it would have won hands down. Yeah, no. But in the woods, would, so. You- <laughs> Yeah, to I say poops? You spelled poops like soup. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still pronounced the same way, I guess. Oh, Let me don't see correct it. it. Don't correct it, Ted. <laughs> yeah. oh. Just so the group chat. Let me see poop soup. All right, so that's one for Dustin. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Things that would get a doctor sued for malpractice. Things that would get a doctor sued for malpractice. Or... Des chooses pour la quiselle une medicine serrat pour souvia. That's how, that was actually better than your English. <laughs> Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Round two. Things that would get a doctor sued for malpractice. Being Dustin's dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen those teeth? I'd sue his dentist. The fact that they don't understand the female body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lund, 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 we said don't get political. Bad breath. How bad would your breath have to be to get sued for malpractice? Pretty bad. Yeah. Prescribing a hawk to a... It's too bad Aaron's not picking this one. Yeah. Hey. I need you to spit on that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll, that, that'll do it. Where did my ring go? Oh. Wait, your ring? Or the, do- okay, the doctor's ring. Yeah. And faking their patient's death. Oh, what a mixed bag. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to say faking their patient's death. Oh, wow. Oh. I didn't I, want to go topical. I didn't want to go. I thought Hawk Tour was going to go. Yeah. I actually would have Who was it. that one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I, li- I really like that one. You was robbed. Yeah, yeah you was Yeah. Robbed. I went very literal. I like the literal one. That's weird because right. you can't really read. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. Take it back. It's not, we haven't moved on Yeah. Yet. I would like to no, go I, with Hawk Tour. Uh. They just keep <laughs> one in the chamber on the couch all night. And as soon as you do something nice for him, he just fires at you. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess, Kevin, you may as well go next. Okay. Things that are harder than they look. I'm so proud for not doing a dick joke here. You have no idea. I want you to know that I just want to give the same answer as I did to the first one. (laughs) All right. So, the question was? Things that are harder than they look. Unripened kiwi. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's so literal. That's amazing. I can hardly even read that, too. Ad reads. (laughs) Hey! (laughs) Listening to this podcast. Oh, yeah. It's not that hard. It sucks. We just turn it off. (laughs) Uncle Meat. (laughs) Well, that could be taken in a few Depends on the day. (laughs) (laughs) This podcast. (laughs) Ooh. Bench press. Low low blow. (laughs) Bench press. I can't believe no one said Kevin's forehead. Mm. Yeah, that, that looks pretty hard though. <laughs> if um, unripened kiwi doesn't, I don't know who did it, yeah. but that's the yeah, fucking. Yeah, let's go with unripened kiwi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. come on. Again, you couldn't read it, so you knew it was his right away. <laughs> you could tell it was Dustin's just by the like childlike yeah. writing. Yeah. How did he spell kiwi? K e e w e e. I'm not I sure unripened. I was between unripened kiwi and doing up Dustin's hat. I didn't know what to go with. That was you're good at this game because you come up with the like that was yeah. actually a brilliant answer. <laughs> that I'm was perfect. Lie. Yeah. Well, just the way Sorry about the bench it. press one because yeah. you were so confused too. <laughs> yeah. That's two boys. Hey, just in case we cut the last question, Lund got the point. <laughs> Things you wish you didn't know. How many calories are in a McRib? Mm-hmm. Do you know the answer? Well, they're always changing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go. Things you shouldn't have to pay for. Hmm. Things you shouldn't have to pay for. 
somebody to hold you ever so gently. Oh. You, yes, Aww. you do have to pay for cuddling sometimes, and that yeah. is unfair. That just leads to sex. That's not how it works. Being part of this podcast, sorry, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> that hawk Tua parking at the hospital. Oh. Uh, things you shouldn't have to pay for are realtors. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a double shot. <laughs> wow. And the McRib. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of choices. In fairness, whoever wrote realtors, I thought about writing accountants. <laughs> <laughs> Should have. Um, I'm going to go with someone, somebody to hold you ever so gently. Wow. Oh, you know wow. what? You deserve that after getting... Every, everyone deserves a hug. Yeah. Yes. Two, one, know. one, one. one. Things you shouldn't do with your mouth open. Hmm. Things you shouldn't do with your mouth open. Ride your bike in the forest. Hmm. 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 That's, That's a helpful hit. Factual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Eat Lund's cooking. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's a stray I didn't expect to catch. <laughs> Okay, well, it's either the answer is either the McRib or <laughs> Greco Roman wrestle. Oh, yeah, that's not mine, but Greco, what's Greco? That's like it's a form of wrestling, it's oh. like high school wrestling. Who knows that? <laughs> it's one person and Aaron. Actually, I had a friend in an MMA fight once who uh had another person's blood get in their mouth and then they puked it up after the fight. So, oh, any cool. sort of MMA or wrestling, <laughs> this is a fun game. <laughs> Uh, this is, oh, this is probably a winner. For Dustin's sake, smile. <laughs> <laughs> For Dustin. I hope Dustin wrote that. It <laughs> wasn't even me. That's oh, so good. <laughs> They're fine Jesus. now. They're okay now. Oh, he's broken. He's got the giggles. <laughs> You're going to have so many forehead wrinkles after this. Not if you go to Hebe Beauty oh, Bar. Uh, as a mouth breather, breathe. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, don't know about that one. I just wanted to make sure everything was spelled correctly, yeah. Dustin. Oh man! <laughs> Visit the Lund Ted residence after a night out. Mm -hmm. You don't want to taste that. <laughs> Fair point. Oh. It's a unique smell, that's for sure. <laughs> I've got to give that to the the Dustin smiling one. Yeah! <laughs> you wrote that about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Smart. He acted. He acted like. <laughs> oh man! Did. Well done. Well done. Let's go. All right, last one. So oh. you've got three now. I got three. So you you won. Let's do last one for fun. <laughs> but <laughs> one for let's fun. all hear things that confirm that your life is going downhill. What confirms your life is going downhill? Is it everybody talking about your teeth on a podcast? What could it be? Talking about how much you poop in the woods? I don't know. Can we shut her mic off? <laughs> <laughs> Your lives are all going downhill. Hey, Len, tell us about this new segment. Oh, <laughs> you guys are going to love it. <laughs> all right, last one. Here we go. This one's worth triple the points. Oh, mm. Things nice. that confirm that your life is going downhill. Giving out hawk tuas for $10 a pop. It should be free. <laughs> Ordering the McRib. <laughs> My parents. <laughs> That's true. Your parents will tell you. Driving down Spruce Hill to this dog shit podcast. <laughs> you get engaged. Oh, oh no. Oh. Alex, did you write that? And when your boat lift stops working. Oh. Hold on. I got a bad. This is I got a backup one that I just thought of. It doesn't count, but I have to do it. Oh, having a backup car spoon. That's just being prepared. <laughs> <laughs> have car cutlery. You never know what you're going to run into. <laughs> cartlery? You, you could invent a thing. God damn it. That's clever. <laughs> cartlery coming to you from the Pat Oh Dear podcast. <laughs> Patent pending. 100% bamboo. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Whalebone. Whalebone. <laughs> Built no. to last. Yeah. <laughs> Single use plastic. Yeah. Okay. Well, it'll last for a whale. <laughs> Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Uh, the winner is your boat lift yeah. because honestly, that really did that, yeah. prove yeah, that that's... my life was going downhill. I came out for a boat day and I, I did not get it. That was mine. Oh. oh, good listening, Andrew. Oh. Congrats okay. on second place. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll wrap up. Could Dustin flat a beer? Congratulations. That's like the one game like, that's actually probably going to come to fruition because no one has to do any kind of punishment. But uh, that just about does it for this episode. So as always, well, briefly, we'll wrap up with uh, everyone's final thoughts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> just for everything. This is, this is I'll be a broken man when we're done editing this one. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. 
thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Um, I was really excited to finally hear the mummy minute. Um, <laughs> lots of uh, suspense and build up for that. So you, you knocked it out of the park. Thank you. And Dustin, thanks for uh, coming tonight. Um, maybe next time I pick you up, you'll be on time. <laughs> See you in November. Kevin, you still owe me a carriage ride and a movie. <laughs> I'll be late until you give me that. Okay, perfect. We're going to go see Twisters together. Just happy to be back. Fun (laughs) night. I got a win under my belt. I'm going to go home happy, man. And a great smile. And TV. (laughs) (laughs) No one's still watching this. It's like 11.45 on a Tuesday night at this point. Uh, I just want to know when the McRib is back. (laughs) Isn't it? Uh, I've been thinking about it all night. Oh. And... Yeah, no, I had fun tonight. It's always a blast coming in here. Uh, good job on the AC tonight too, Riley. This is, uh, I thought this was going to be a hot box, but it was perfect. Uh, it's comfier on the couch anyways, so I'd rather be over here. You didn't get coughed on all night. Nope, wasn't gross at all. I'm not sick anymore. I'm just gross. Uh, it was good to be back. Miss you guys. Uh, Dusty, keep smiling with your mouth open, buddy. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> No, it used to be. They're, perfect. Like They're now. perfect now. There was two tucked in I behind can't believe that. you wrote that about yourself, but well done. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant move. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I guess we'll wrap things up. It was... Uh, did you go? Was that... Your, no, your, I had that? Okay. Yeah. And before, I just apologized. Yeah. Before we leave, uh, I think it's a good time to introduce a new segment. <laughs> uh, we call this the Mommy Minute. Uh, go ahead, Aaron. All right, with that, uh, well, <laughs> another episode of Oh Dear mercifully comes to an end. If you're still at the end of this, oh, bless your heart, because this this was a long one. was really fun having everyone back in here. Riley, as always, thank you to you and Communal Creative Studios for having us. A reminder, too, uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, somehow we're still on TikTok. Like and subscribe to our YouTube page. And hey, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whatever it is, uh, leave us a review. It's been about three years since we've had had a review so it wouldn't hurt to freshen those up a little bit be a bit more current but uh, thank you as always to our presenting sponsor Bose Bar and Stage and last but not least thank you to you for tuning in once again to the Oh Dear podcast for Dustin Moore, Kevin Walsh, Ryan Lund, co-worker Aaron, Andrew Russell and the athlete Kevin Strybosch I'm Ted Emmett and we'll see you next time. Uh, one last thing uh <laughs> <laughs>